even in my time zone, I can't like if I were not recording tonight, I'd be an old man and I'd be going to bed. So no, no shade thrown. Mm. That's a weird pronunciation for playing Hades. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm almost well. See, here's the thing, Justin uh, is my secret captain. I'm always playing Hades in mm. bed. In bed. That's primarily okay. No, 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 no joke. Let, let me expose my nerd belly to you guys here. <laughs> I have I have a gooseneck tablet mount uh, onto which I, I Tell me put more. my switch, <laughs> and then I just lay down, and I've got the screen right there. I can hold it like much more precisely at a distance to my face than I can when I'm actually playing in handheld. Okay, that and I get to have my nice. arms under the covers while Ooh. I play with the separate Joy Cons. Yo, it like I'm never going back. Oh, yeah, separate Joy Cons too. That's a game changer. Uh-huh. That's a yeah, game changer. Right. Oh. Welcome, welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. <laughs> God, you could like, if you're a side sleeper, you could even, you could like lay on your side and uh-huh. have your yeah. arms and like move the gooseneck. To, oh my God! I, I, I have done. Listen to the excitement build in Scott's voice. <laughs> oh man! Guess who's buying a gooseneck? I know. Mythos Busters, investigating the mystery, monsters, and madness of Arkham Horror, the card game. Hello, and welcome to episode 141 of Mythos Busters. I'm Sean, and joining me tonight are the boys. We've got Justin. Hey, Justin. Hello. I'm counting down the moments till I get to see you. I know, Not right? only because I haven't seen you in a good long while, but because you're you're bringing me my Storm Marvel Champions pack ostensibly next time I see Ooh. you, and that's that's I, very exciting. For I me. knew why you said it, and I love you anyway. <laughs> it's both. It can be both. Yes, and. <laughs> exactly. Uh, joining tonight is Ian. Hey, Ian. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm okay, just fighting off this cold, so I apologize in advance for any... Uh nastiness <laughs> mm. listeners might a... hear from me in uh, this episode in the next there's a bit of that going around yeah nowadays. yeah it, it, it really is uh scale of one to ten what's your excitement for the marvel's champion pack storm releasing this week uh hmm. i have not picked up champions since buster con i mean not uh, buster con since arkham knight sorry which is, um which is understandable yeah. for reasons we'll talk about later so like a five <laughs> like most of my marvel has been going to other marvel related games let's just say so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about it we'll, we'll later, talk about it later too. later <laughs> <laughs> and, and scott's with us as well hey scott oh snap yeah <laughs> oh there it is oh boy this is almost Snap Busters tonight, but we'll we'll get there. Dude, as soon as that game adds the ability to like just play with friends, it's fucking awesome. Oh, we talk yeah, about that shit yeah. all oh, the time. It's coming yeah. soon, but you need to play it now so you can oh, unlock I am all the cards. It now. Oh, okay. Good. I'm just I'm just not I'm gonna evangelize much harder when I can actually play yeah, with the people too. I can't wait I'm to play with you guys. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I mean, we're gonna have to have Mythos Busters tournaments. Like <laughs> all the Discord yes. and stuff. But hell yeah. But the snap league, but what? let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, well, well, well. <laughs> In fact, this podcast is not about Marvel Snap, uh, which you should at least go look at and see if it appeals. Uh, but uh, it is about Arkham Horror, the card game, and we've got such a fun one for you guys tonight. Uh, so we're going to get our normal intros out of the way, check in with our patrons, tiny bit of news. Uh, and then uh, our main topic tonight is going to be to talk about our time at Arkham Knights, uh, because our last episode, you got to see the panel that we had a, a great time running. Uh, and now we're just going to talk about the the experience itself. We absolutely meant to sit down and record this episode when we were all together. Mm-hmm. But boy, guys, when we're all together, doesn't time move at like 4x speed? <laughs> it <laughs> at really least. does. Yeah. <laughs> at least. Like, like it's a damn thing. So unfortunately, we just couldn't find a good window to to do it well. So we decided to push it to to afterwards. So we'll be a little bit rusty, but a lot more energized. Yeah, if we had done it there, I think it would have been one of our low energy shows. Because <laughs> <laughs> by horse. Sunday, oh yeah. boy, like yeah, all of our voices were half fried at least. 
Mm-hmm. It would have been one of those where it would have we would have sounded amazing for the first fifteen minutes. The real deep, uh, like yeah. I've been smoking for a week voice, and then after that, yes. our, it would cut in and out for an hour and a half. The Janis Joplin <laughs> episode, front loaded with smoldering sexiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, mm-hmm. uh, uh, so I, I think we all stand by our decision. We, we regret uh, to have delayed it, but here we are, and we're going to talk about Arkham, Arkham Knights tonight, and then, of course, we will round it out with a little bit of tentacle time. But before we get to any of that, I want to check in with you guys. It's been a solid while since last we played some Arkham, so what have you been doing in the meantime? I, uh, I've been playing with my uh, Wendy Bless deck, Mm. Uh, and I started a campaign through Insmith with Mr. Trench. And uh, this time I brought f- the parallel front side Wendy, front and back. Um, oh, it's pretty good, isn't it? Oh boy, I underestimated it. I, <laughs> it's I, I, pretty good. I, I had tried it once and I think um, I didn't really get it. <laughs> uh, but using the backside and. Um, Using what's it called? Uh, tw- not twist of fate, tempt fate. Mm-hmm. Um, and and being... just to be clear, you're focusing on bless in this Wendy deck. Hardcore right? bless. Yeah. Okay, I, okay. I considered doing um, curse as well, but honestly, the only thing I wanted from curse was probably like Faustian bargain, sure. um, and the card drawing one, and it didn't feel like that was enough to go to 35 cards for me. Mm-hmm. Deep um, knowledge. Yeah, but it performs. Like I, I am fully sold on full parallel Wendy now. Um, the amount of locking down she can do is just obtuse. Um, mm-hmm. Not to mention with uh, Favor of the Sun and Ancient Covenant. Um, yeah. And uh, Favor of the Moon, I, I think I need to find room for it because I'm using uh, Tempt Fate. So as soon as I play uh, it, I can pull sure. the curses out. Just snag them all out. Yep. But also... <laughs> hey, I hold go- this for me. <laughs> yeah. When I go to do like a, a big evade that's really important, I have an Ancient Covenant that's ready. I will... So I go to draw. I do Favor of the Moon, Favor of the Sun, Ancient Covenant. And then I can seal both of those tokens on that enemy, locking them down for two extra turns. Ooh. Is that how you get Paradoxical Covenant to work? Is that how that would... All right. I mean, maybe. Okay, now I understand. I, yeah, I can, oh, I guess you could do Paradoxal. I, I'm just st- stickly, I, I stick with Ancient Covenant. Oh, yeah, your version's better. I just, like, my, my <laughs> mystic brain slipped for a minute, and I'm like, oh, is that what you do with Paradoxical Covenant? Okay. Yeah, I mean, Scott, you have one of each, so. Scott, can you yep. remind me for a second, just because it's been so long since I've looked at the, the parallels, the big difference mm-hmm. between um, the, the Wendy's? Yeah, and just, so. And just why it changes it. So the back of Wendy, uh, the parallel Wendy, so normally she's uh, rogue to two, survivor five, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Backside, she's basically survivor zero to five, and then you either choose bless or curse, or you can choose both. Um, And then so you get survivor zero to five, and is it it bless all the way to five and curse all the way to five? Or is it stopped at four? I believe so. I think it's chosen up, I think you can take everything. Yeah, so you can... Choose, so like me, I choose blessed, so I can take any card that is that has the trait blessed on it, uh, which is everything that deals with blesses. Right. Uh, and then there's a few other cards too, like there's various events and stuff. Um, or you can choose curse and go like that, but you can also choose both. But then you have to uh, up your deck size to thirty five. Okay. Um, Interesting. And then. Yeah, and then the front side, oh my god, I think I need to go find it. I have it right here. Okay, can you read it? Because it's like her and her memento is just paragraphs. So, So, yeah, it's a lot. So, add title memento to your deck. Um, Reaction after you successfully evade a non-elite enemy. Seal either one blessed token or one cursed token from the chaos bag or any blessed or cursed tokens revealed from the chaos bag during this test on that enemy. So, you could get multiples, but most of the time you're just digging in the bag. But that's not. I don't know. I, I, I've triggered multiples a couple times. Yep, I have to randomly also. Um, and then yeah. her her memento uh, is is what enables you to do things once those tokens are on. Uh, so it's permanent. Starts the game in play. Uh, reaction when an enemy would ready or doom would be placed on it. Release a bless or curse token sealed on that enemy to cancel that effect. 
Or, during a skill test you are performing, when a chaos token would be revealed from the chaos bag, resolve a chaos, or sorry, reveal, resolve a bless or curse token sealed on the enemy instead. On an enemy instead. So you can just pull it, so it becomes like another uh, blessing, or uh, uh, moon, sun. Yeah. So, moon cards. So one of the combos I pulled off also that I absolutely love that this is the one that sold me and I'm like, okay, I finally get it. <laughs> like it was, I, I was playing through, we were playing through the Doom of Etsley and Snake Mom was out and I was evading a whole bunch. Uh, Casey's playing or Casey's playing Amanda and I have a, like a two, two, two snake dude with me and then Snake Mom and I have like no icon to commit. My uh, running shoes got, or my track shoes got taken away. So I'm just like, I'm at four agility. So I'm, and I only have one charge on the favor of the sun holding one blessed token. And Ancient Covenant is up. So I'm mm. like, okay, I think <laughs> I know how to do this. So I evaded the little dude using the favor of the sun. But not Ancient Covenant. So I pull a Blessed Token, and then I had to pull a Normal Token from the bag. Mm -hmm. I sealed that Blessed Token on the little dude. Then I went to evade Snake Mom. I used the Blessed Token off the the little dude, used Ancient Covenant to auto-pass, and auto-succeeded auto in evading Snake Mom. Mm -hmm. So I basically got to use that Blessed Token twice, and it was beautiful. And That's... I fantastic yeah i i think i think parallel wendy may be my new favorite investigator <laughs> Ooh, yeah I, I yeah Ooh. yeah yeah i know Ooh, look it, at that twitter patient wow. going on over here ian agility is no longer a dump stat <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's See, new okay this day so can, can someone go check on scott <laughs> someone go yeah. check on scott <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Terminator oh. 2 scene. <laughs> Your parents yeah. are dead. Call, Your Scott is call dead. Call Scott's wife. <laughs> yeah. There's a body snatcher in her house. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, send me that list. I'm interested. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. I've I've played around. I kind of flailed around trying my own uh, uh, parallel Wendy. I got Ian's curse list, which I really enjoyed playing. Um, so I'd be interested. It'd, it'd just be so balanced and perfect to get a blessed list from you and have it be better than anything that i built yeah um and also by the way uh signum crucius in amanda is bonkers good <laughs> oh when you fill in the black uh, the bag with bless i'm sure it is yeah and at one point uh case stumbled onto the uh nine shroud location that doesn't have any clues <laughs> and just like okay well signum crucius fills the bag <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. seven blast tokens it's ridiculous <laughs> so that's the arkham equivalent of like glitching off a ledge into an area that you weren't supposed to get into mm -hmm. there i put the list up in uh chat but i will send it so anyone else who wants to look at it that was my starting wonderful yeah yeah oh cool uh ian what you been playing um i had a few uh, kind of decks going. One is I didn't get a chance to play my Vincent Lee deck at uh, Arkham Knight, so I decided to start a campaign with it and pair it with another deck I brought tonight that I didn't try out, which is Power Word Marie. So I was like, yeah, I'll just didn't really design them to work mm. together, but I'll just mash mm. them together and see how oh, they my get. New mystic favorite, <laughs> my new favorite Mystic card. Oof. It's, yeah, Power Word is so good. It's definitely strong. Um, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so i've been i mean it's the kind of card i wanted to exist since early in the game like take command of an enemy and yeah well mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll see how it goes long term in terms of taboo and power management and all that <laughs> don't but, say um, <laughs> but uh <laughs> i decided to run them through Innsmouth just because eh, i haven't played it in a bit so um for the first scenario pit of despair went, went pretty well um, and then Vanishing was a little bit of a disaster. Um, and really, it's because I've in both scenarios, I've had some ill-timed uh, Baron Samedi appearances. And I always uh -oh. forget how bad of a weakness um, oh. the Baron really is. Especially 
When your whole deck is uh, built around L. Rubash, who's the one who, like, you stick assets under and the doom doesn't count. Like, that's the whole oh, stick no. of the deck. And I always forget that Baron has the ally, uh, takes up the ally slot and just kicks her right out. So, uh... Mm-hmm. And then you're stuck with the doom and the Baron. Oh, no! Yes. Yeah. Marie! Poor Marie! So... She's so good beyond the Baron. <laughs> Yeah, like, everything else was fine. It was working well. The power order was, was great. Um, I, I tried out some of the new cards, like Ceremonial Sickle and Dowsing Rod. Um, and Vincent Lee is is really good. Like, I was, his is kind of a flexi deck. Like, you can actually build him to be a pretty strong killer, too, like, with his, his saw. And um, uh, I also have the axe in that deck as kind of a backup weapon. So it's a, it's an interesting pairing cause they can each do a little bit of both, but yeah, it's really after that Baron experience, I haven't gone back to the campaign. Like it's one of those moments where like it, it has an irrational effect on you where like, it's fine. Like the campaign's still okay. I could keep going, but I'm just like, just, just put a sour taste in my mouth. So, um, mm. <clears throat> the other decks I tried out, uh, and preparation for two of the investigators we're going to look at in the next episode, the episode after this one. Um, I decided, what if I paired Carson and Charlie Keene together? The butler Ooh, and the politician. And Boy, that sounds like the most Ian decision ever. <laughs> I know, isn't it, though? <laughs> and and I was building the decks late at night, kind of sick. So I was like, oh, these decks are trash. But I'm like, I'm just going to run with it. Um, so I didn't put like too much thought into it. And I'm like, okay, one has a stat line of all ones. The other has a stat line of all twos. These are decks I threw together. Like, this is like, how bad can it be? This is probably going to be a complete trash fire. And you know what? They both have did really well together. Um, And I played them. Mm. I played them. uh, These are standalone decks, actually, not campaign. I played them once mm. through Ruguru, and then since I had that bad experience of vanishing, I'm like, I'll take these decks standalone vanishing. So those are the two scenarios I played. Both scenarios, they did really well together. Um, and I'll probably share more thoughts about both investigators when we review these investigators soon. But damn, like, I was surprised. Like, even with... I, I, I can see there's parts where I could tune up these decks, but... Like, uh, this was my first experience running both of them. I've played across from Carson but and, and running Charlie Kane, but I was doing some shenanigans with, like, Michael Lee was, like, one of my allies in Raising Kane, so I was getting a bunch of uh, evidence on him that you can later spend to pump up damage. Um, that was interesting with Charlie Kane. Uh, I was running some of the disposable, like, art students and lab assistants, which are nice just to, like, quickly get out um, allies. And then once they're out, you can still use them for Charlie Kane's ability. Uh, the upgraded guard dog. Oh, I put Summon Hound on there on a whim, and that actually yeah! has worked out really well. Yeah, with you King- do. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like... Th- there's so much jank that you can do. It's really fun. Like, figure- And then when you have Carson across who gives you that extra action, like, oh, the turns are so fun. Figuring out, like, I do a summon hound action here, and then I do my turn, and then Carson does his thing, but then he gives me an action during his turn, and oh, it, it's, I, I think I might want to run an actual whole campaign with these two, because it's, it's a Ooh. fun combo. So it sounds fun. like you're high on Carcane. Oh, oh God. <laughs> well, I know what my campaign is called now. <laughs> Slow clap. <laughs> Carson, bring me my car game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Okay, so it's so funny that you say that. I've yet to build it because I, I yet to have the focus to finish it. But my first thought when I'm like, all right, Charlie, what do I do? was oh this is another character that can take the survivor uh upgraded uh, a survivor level two and summon hound mm. and uh to to do uh uh oh, shoot what's the survivor event uh, uh a chance faded encounter? chance and enca- chance encounter that sounds right I'm anyway sure and just pull it out from the uh from the discard pile and not have to shuffle the weakness in which is fun um but then also with Charlie's signature ally, you just pull double duty out of the uh, the hound. Like, oh, mm, 
Yeah, yeah. And at first I was like, do I want to include some of these, like Michael Lee and Summon Hell, that they exhaust to do their thing? Because, like, I exhaust to use their ability, and the answer turned out to be yes, because it's just it's just more flexibility. Like, I don't know, there's just <laughs> a lot of decisions. And then I have Call for Backup in there, because he has so many different kinds of spheres in there for the different allies, so that one has been good, Oh, too. sure. Yeah. Oh. Send me those lists, too. I, I shall. Is it, obvi- is it obvious that I lack inspiration lately? <laughs> <laughs> but you I do like to see decks. Is it lack of inspiration, or is it... And I, I feel I get this, too. When there's a big dump of cards, it's intimidation. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's it's yeah. the uh, the open world game that gives you a very narrow tutorial and then dumps you into the open world and goes, <laughs> good fucking luck. Yep, yeah. here, here's all the quests. See, that's where I was at, and that's when I was just like, uh, these decks, I just threw them together. I'm just going to roll with it and see what happens. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, Justin, what you been playing? My Arkham time has been fairly limited since Arkham Knights, uh, but I was very happy with the amount of Arkham we got to play there. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I have been doing with my time instead of playing is prepping for Scarlet Keys because, Ooh. you guys, I hate to admit it, but I had not sorted my cards since just before Edge of the Earth dropped. Ooh. Ooh. So. <laughs> so you had a backlog. <laughs> so they're all sorted now, and it's it's great, um, and I'm fairly meticulous with it when I do it, but mm. uh, between... Mm-hmm just kind of fell by the wayside then i moved then it was that thing that stares at you on the shelf and you're like "Uh, (laughs) no not today not tonight (laughs) yeah but i'm i'm getting (laughs) not tonight old friend (laughs) i am with the the new investigator cards out and i'm getting so excited for for scarlet keys and sean when when you and i just bust through it that first time Mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. that was the motivation i needed so i spent hours putting everything back in order so that's what i've been doing it's not it's not very fun but it was functional and now i'm in a good place to play a bunch hell yeah looking forward to it do we have do we have a scuttlebutt on on drop date for the campaign at this point i have not been paying attention next supposed to be next week i think yeah Yeah. (gasps) oh no (laughs) (laughs) i need one more week at least (laughs) well no So what ha- what happens, and this is, I'm sure, by the time the episode gets out, it'll uh, be in the past, but I'm also on vacation next week, mm-hmm. but but not in the way where I can play cards. So, oh. so by the time I get back from that, we're going to be around Thanksgiving, so all we got to do is find one day somewhere in there, and then we can just arc them till we burst. I believe in us. Yeah, we can do it. Well, speaking of campaigns with friends, uh, uh, sorry, Justin, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, not Arkham related. Okay. I did, I did <laughs> such a good segue and then I backtracked on it and it just ruined the whole thing. I'm not a master at my craft. Speaking uh, of Arkham with friends. <laughs> speaking of Arkham with friends. Uh, so we played, yeah, a ton of Arkham at Arkham Knights. I've, I had a couple campaigns myself going prior to Arkham Knights. Haven't touched a one of them. Mm. Uh, but I did start up a new one. I'm starting up a, I started up a two handed Innsmouth campaign, testing out the Silas deck that I planned to bring to Innsmouth. Cause I had a standalone version of it that I brought to Arkham Knights and it was just so fun to play. Mm. Um, so I'm taking him in that campaign across from, uh, my first try at Vincent and they're both flexy like Vincent Vincent has yeah. showed up to kill things. He has shown up for blood. Uh, and, and Silas, for his own part, can get clues, too. It's, it's like a, it's a compass fire axe deck. It's a dark horse deck. Uh, it's a dark horse deck, and like half the deck is skills, and it's, it's fantastic. Mm. Um, so, yeah, having a really good time with that. They got utterly blown out in Pit of Despair. I have not lost... Uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say that, because Nick and I that I'll talk about in a second had a bad loss, but I had not gotten blown out that badly in Innsmouth in a very long time. Um, but they, they did a partial uh, success through vanishing and, and I'm on to 
Devil Reef now. So no wait, Into Deep. Into Deep comes next, right? Yeah. I'm never sure with Innsmouth. I you know I wait, I haven't Iron Maned it yet, so I. <laughs> But I, I I have had a really good time piloting those two across from each other, despite the the difficulties of the campaign. Uh, mm-hmm. Vincent's take on the healer archetype to add a boost basically to to whoever he heals, and that boost being an innate skill in Silas, <laughs> turns out Ooh. is pretty okay. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So they've they've had some. I I feel very good about how those decks have performed despite the hardships they've endured. Let's go with that. The the decks are firing. I just got some bad RNG. So really enjoying Vincent so far. Like a a tankier healer who like is kind of sturdy mm-hmm. for for a seeker. Like he's like the sturdiest seeker, right? Is that the right word? I think, I, I think so. He's pretty sturdy. Resilient, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I find myself, sorry, Carolyn stands, but Carolyn has never quite clicked with me, and Vincent does, mm-hmm. even though they kind of are doing similar things, just flipped, uh, but he just plays... Well, Vincent he, had, has all of his stats, which is nice. Yeah, he plays so differently, his stat line is much different, obviously, and yeah, it's it's it just feels a lot different than Carolyn does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've been having a good time with that campaign. And then uh, also, since Nick and I don't have podcast stuff to, to like work between us anymore, we're like gaming as friends now, <laughs> which, which is like super weird, but awesome. Uh, so he and I started up a uh, return to TFA campaign remotely because now he's in. O- oh, guys, this is this is the coolest. This is the coolest. He's an office schlub, too, now like mm-hmm. us like us peons so he spends most of his working days in front of a computer so now when he wants to play arkham it is it is tabletop i am i, I want to play in a tabletop please let's play remotely to which mm-hmm. i said absolutely that's fantastic um so as i uh, alluded to earlier we got blown out in uh the <sighs> forbidden what's the first scenario in tfa uh forbidden not forbidden wilds no that's the that's the horizon game uh no is it the uh the why can't it untamed wilds? Wilds? No. wilds is that untamed, untamed, untamed wilds. Wilds. yep oh my you. goodness wow that <laughs> was been a while that was far more an effort than it should have been yeah you iron man that one scott what's your excuse now I, asshole i just played it like two days ago <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we got absolutely destroyed in that one. Uh, I think we got like two XP. We both got poisoned. We got Ichtaka, oh. which was nice, but like it was grim. And then we escaped from uh, Doom by the skin of our teeth. Oh, I should probably mention I'm playing Kaimani, and uh, Nick <clears throat> is playing a person I should know. Let me look up. Is that it campaign. Roland? No, it's not Roland, believe it or not. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, hang on. It, we were both... He was back and forth between a few, but he ended up deciding to go with Daryl. Mm, okay. <clears throat> so he's playing a mm. pretty clue-focused Daryl. Um, that campaign's been fun, but wow, TFA can really hit hard. And guess what, guys? I'm, like, so in the mode of including in the thick of it in just, like, every deck. I didn't even <laughs> think about the implications uh-huh. in TFA. So now I'm, like, four trauma in, mm-hmm. and I'm rethinking all of my life choices because I had to spend, like, a big chunk of XP just to get unpoisoned. Uh, and But, I, yeah, as Vinny B, Vinny B points out, Kaimani in TFA is great. Now, I would say that I would be having a better time if my deck weren't responsible for like the majority of enemies because we've kind of gotten rained on in the past few scenarios. So even with that great ability, I have had to like really squeeze out some turns where I I am just maintaining and not really gaining any ground. Mm. Um, But yeah, being able to get around vengeance is so, so nice because uh, Kaimani's ability discards them. It doesn't defeat them. It's fantastic. Uh, so anyway, we're, uh, threads went way better and now we are into, we, we failed hard on our first playthrough of, uh, Heart of the Elders part one. Um, and, uh, and now we're, we're, we're going to just run it back. So right. yeah, it's, having, it's, it's a good time. Y'all have y'all, I assume Ian at least has tried Kaimani at this point. I have. Yes. yes. 
probably well i i don't know we'll see but has a good chance of eventually becoming my favorite investigator i think is it because they actually have willpower that can pass a test no (laughs) who cares about willpower (laughs) (laughs) it's all about that agility though (laughs) (laughs) i mean it is pretty great Mm-hmm. And the thing that I keep forgetting is that they add their uh, uh, intellect to the ability, mm-hmm. like the actual ability t- test. I like I keep going like, God, I just need so many agility icons to actually hit these tests because you have to succeed by the amount of hit points the enemy has left. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I'm up against those snake. The, yeah, the, the little snakes are easy, but the big snake people, you got to succeed by like three or four. So, yeah, remembering to read the card is, is as always, uh, a key part to the uh, whole equation. When you, when you mentioned Vengeance, I also wanted to mention with our Bless campaign that Case and I are playing, uh, we're mm. going for a zero Vengeance run. And, that, and that's why, like, Wendy locked down parallel evade person is... So, that's pretty clutch. Yeah, it's rough, though, in because um, we're doing Return To, uh-huh. and... Like that one where it's like, put a doom on the location or take a vengeance. Your choice. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh man, putting a doom on a location really sucks. But yeah. here we go. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well. I mean, it is a little bit freeing to be playing with a specific goal in mind and that you don't have to agonize over those kinds of decisions. It's like, well, we're just doing it or we don't. Here, yep. let's go. Yep. Mm-hmm. I also uh, had a much harder time against Return to Snake Mama. Mm. Um, which was the name of my Louisiana Zydeco band in high school. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the return to uh, uh, Snake Mama, the, the Harbinger, has significantly high evade with alert two and two. Yeah. Uh, until it gets 10 damage on it uh, for, for two players. So it hasn't been nothing. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's definitely a harder mini boss to deal with in yeah. return. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Unless your goal was just to kill it the whole time, then then you're fine. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's been a good time, so I'm looking forward to continuing that campaign. All right, boys, so let's move on from there. Uh, Ian, what's going on with our patrons at the moment? So first off, thanks to our board members, that's Chris B, Chris H, Chris M, and Chris U, our conglomeration of Chris's, Morton, Jared, Ian, Kyle, Philip, Patrick, Abilio, Jesse, Chad, and Robert. Thanks so much, board members, for all that you do. And a special shout out to a random patron this time around goes to Luis Salgado. Thank you, Luis, for your support as well. We definitely appreciate it. Um, we have a few job titles to give out this time. Um, I'll start out with the first one. Uh, so joining us in the Mythos Busters offices, we have Atar Ingolfsson. Who's going to be taking on the role of cash cart refurbishment technician, making sure those cash carts are ready to go in the uh, in the old casino? And Ian, Ian, that role reports directly to you because of its involvement in the casino, correct? They do. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Roll. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I wasn't even trying with that one, but good job, guys. We're going to give you that one for free. <laughs> Just for that, well, Sean, you can it. read the next one. <laughs> sure. Uh, so Ying Nam Lang will be uh, filling the position, which is on backfill. We've been, we've been needing something like this since the corset days. Uh, but the lead architect of the Flashlight Battery Bank, because people are still buying corsets. And batteries need supplies. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Scott, why don't you read the last one? Uh, I have Eric, and unless it's Eric, I assume it's Eric, but uh, it's, it's almost definitely Eric. Okay. Uh, unless it's Eric, in which case, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so he is going to be our clues per tempo analyst, and during the scouting season, our good card scout. Uh, you're basically looking for clues, you know, cards that get clues. Just mm-hmm. it gets clues. Yeah, yep. gets clues. What, what does he do? Gets, gets clues. clues. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So it's important stat to uh, to look over. Yeah, sure is. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you uh, to all of the new hires. Report to HR. Uh, uh, benefits open enrollment is uh, due tomorrow. 
That's a corporate joke for everyone there. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's move on to some community news. Uh, so first thing we want to prop. Uh, so for any of you who are, are kind of involved in the Arkham community and we're paying attention to Arkham Knights, uh, and in particular the cosplay and costume contest that was held therein, um, you may have been in despair knowing that it, not being a resident of the U.S., you could not actually enter the the virtual version that uh, the, I think it was the Game Zenter, I might be misspeaking there, the Game Zenter put on. Yes. But fear not, yeah. because f- friends of the show, the Arkham Chronicle, are in conjunction with Chaos Cards hosting a rest of the world Arkham Knights costume contest. Um, So go ahead and check out their most recent YouTube video. Uh, We've linked it in the show notes, but obviously just go check the Arkham Chronicle out on YouTube if you haven't already. And if you haven't, what is happening? Just Mm -hmm. go. And go look at their old stuff, too. It's fantastic. And you might recognize some faces. Um, But go check that out. The the important part to know is that the closing date for entries on this, this Rest of the World costume contest is November 30th. So, you know, get on it. Go check out the Arkham Chronicles video on it. That should be fun. That, the costume contest at Arkham Knights this year was surprisingly good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It, was, it was one of the better ones we've had. Uh huh. And like they, they actually like everyone did a little bit of shtick. They like uh, Duke and Nick actually emceed it, and Duke was doing like a character the whole time and interviewing the contestants. <laughs> yeah, that like was great. it was, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. So anyway, uh, if you missed that, go ahead and and check out the Rest of the World Costume Contest. Uh, Justin, what else we got? Well, it is approaching meme contest season. (gasps) And then we all applaud because we're excited about it. It's Uh, it's the most most wonderful thought. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we both went there <laughs> uh yeah i i don't have exact dates for us yet but we typically do it uh, you know in november into december uh, potentially a little into january but we're we're just approaching that season so i wanted to at least get it out there that if you are thinking about entering start getting your memes together and then we will be putting up uh all the rules the dates info about prizes um, it's going to take me just a little bit longer to get things set up this year because we're not going to be doing it on Facebook as we have in the past because we still have a strike on our Facebook account because of last year's meme contest. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, we thanks we, Steven Crowder. Yeah. We uh, to to <laughs> clarify because we've talked about this in the past, but we found out people thought we were joking. We're not. We actually have a nope. strike on our Facebook account because. Uh, we we used a meme format that is often used inappropriately, but it it, defi- it definitely wasn't. It it was just mm. caught in their auto filters. We tried to appeal it, but Facebook's appeal process is unfortunate. Um, so anyway, more mm. to come. It'll be on a different platform, but it's going to be great. Uh, I every year I think we worry that people are going to run out of ideas about what to submit, and every year we are pleasantly surprised by the pure shenanigans that Mm -hmm. people produce so yeah and not speaking ahead because we have to get some things in line but i'm hoping we can do at least another read through on twitch uh to culminate the whole thing so oh god yeah yep i know those absolutely i always enjoy those (laughs) absolutely and the first one we did is still like one of our most viewed videos on youtube (laughs) yeah we'll uh we'll see if we can get nick back to have to put up with it now in a different role <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely nick nick the meme lord you know we all know <laughs> nick for the guy who makes all those memes all he, the memes yeah. yep so so we've got that uh and then even more exciting than the meme contest <gasps> if you can believe it we are ready to roll out our dates for buster con <gasps> oh my god finally right it's happening yeah. Oh. So we, uh, as, as most people know, we ended up have it. We ended up deciding we didn't have to, but we decided that based on where the COVID numbers were at in 2022, even though it was in May, we we needed to postpone BusterCon one more year. I think in hindsight, we're all very happy with that decision, okay. um, uh, and then we'll we'll continue to to watch for any health related things that come up. But I feel very good about the chances that uh, 
it's it's going to happen. And the dates, May 18th through the 21st, 2023. That is going to be at the Game Center at FFZ in Roseville, Minnesota. Um, mm-hmm. More info to come. We're going to uh, uh, get another block of hotel rooms for people if they're coming into town. We will have ticketing information, event information, all of that um, as we get closer. But when we're here, you know, just a little over what six months out, we want to give people plenty of time to mm-hmm. start planning. Um, you may want to wait on booking anything until we roll out any official details, but in terms of scheduling, that's when it'll be May 18th through 21st, 2023. Yeah. Don't book your hotel yet. Cause we will get another block mm-hmm. so that it's cheaper. So, and, and you psych- want that buster pricing. Yeah. And psychopath says buster con is on his birthday. So, I mean, we're going to have to get a cake and sing happy birthday <laughs> or just like start. <laughs> A cupcake and a very solemn happy birthday, but a giant crowd of people doing it. Oh, well, dude, we'll do all the happy birthdays during the karaoke party. Mm, yeah, there we <laughs> right? go. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, that's uh, Fantastic. that's BusterCon is coming. So it is. Yeah. The dates are real. It it's time to get excited. And what are those dates? One more time, just in case. Those dates so for those of you who are who are just joining us, May eighteenth, twenty one, twenty twenty three. They don't have to rewind the podcast now. There you go. <laughs> get the pencil it, out, stick it in there, get the tape going backwards, you know. <laughs> For those of you just joining us, that's May 18th, 21st, <laughs> and 21, 2023. Wonderful. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited for that. Oh. Uh, Arkham Knights was enough to whet my appetite to be like, yeah, and then we'll do our version of this and have it be like our thing. Everything we want, great. everything we want, down to the last <laughs> detail. That's yeah. That's just Scott code for Star Wars CCG. <laughs> Dead CCG day. Look, okay, so look, I know I haven't been as good about playing the older games that everyone brings with the past few times, uh, but I am, I am diving in like Scrooge McDuck on sunday of buster con yes. it's gonna be great yeah, i will not touch an arkham card on sunday <laughs> <laughs> you won't that's touch right, any baby. game that's still in print <laughs> yeah <laughs> only dead games yeah i mean at the, at the rate we're talking about all the other games we're going to play it's not just going to be on dead ccg day i don't think we're going to end up playing any arkham <laughs> yeah <laughs> we true. have saturday right like that's our that's iron man it can it can take a second seat on Sunday, and maybe the other days, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'm super pumped. Yeah, so it's gonna games. be a great great time. So yeah. so pay attention for further details. Um, we've got a lot coming. Mm-hmm. All right, boys. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Arkham Knights. Yeah. Hmm. Sh- shall we? It happened. It sure did. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful whirlwind, was it not? It went so fast. <laughs> it's a blur. Like it was. <laughs> yeah. And Scott, you were here the longest by like at least a full day. Yeah, like I flew in on Wednesday, mm-hmm. like in the afternoon, evening, evening. Yeah. Anyways, evening, and then left Monday morning. But it mm-hmm. felt like just man, that was way too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Despite wall to wall, so good times. Yeah, I'm just so happy uh, both you and Ian got to to come back to Minnesota. I know a yeah. lot of times we get to see you here once a year, and then Ian, we get to see you at Gen Con. But it was seeing you guys in person twice in one year just warms my heart. Minnesota's yeah. my Agreed. second home. <laughs> well, you know, if anyone wants to move to the greatest state in the union, uh, let me know. Uh, I have connections. I mean, if and, I namely, move there, namely Justin, but. You know, let's. If I move there, I'll have to move to Little Canada. <laughs> Obviously, that's, that's cool. It's like twenty minutes away. It's I cool. know exactly. I was gonna say you're describing a town right in between where I live and where Sean lives. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's ideal. Mm-hmm. It's written in the stars. Uh, so speaking of the stars, uh, really the first notable thing that that kicked <laughs> off the weekend for us was uh, a, a rousing night. Of Star Wars CCG. Of course it was. <laughs> what other card game would we play? Um, 
And I had a little surprise for you. I actually bought us sealed, yes. sealed Star Wars CCG product that we could open. Like we opened that the booster packs. older than my child, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I had a couple of Cloud City enhanced packs for anyone who knows what those are. Probably not many. Um, <laughs> or no, just one of those. And then uh, two sealed tournament decks that... Initially, the I was Jabba's like, Palace with the deck box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were both chewy, but that's fine. Yeah, it's, it was low percentage, but it happened. Yeah, uh, and I was like, in my mind, when I was, I was getting these, I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be so much fun. We're gonna bust these out. We could make a little sealed deck, and we can play it. And then we opened them, and I was like, <laughs> I, I don't want to play sealed. <laughs> as as we were opening the packs, like we were having fun talking about the rares, but I think it was like slowly dawning on us at the same time, just yeah. to be like, oh, I don't want to play with these cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play with my like my manicured decks that I have made. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I don't want to play with a bunch of commons and just like <laughs> unnamed aliens. It's just like. <laughs> Oh man, I I love Star Wars CCG, but at its like basis, when you're just starting to assemble decks and you like don't have any, many rares and like you're, basically the position those sealed decks were in, mm-hmm. it's a slog sometimes. Yeah, oh, it's terrible. It's so. it's not a good sealed game or drafting. No, game. I it's think not. it's terrible. Not not sealed or drafting. I totally agree. Unless the draft is like very very focused. Yeah. Like like focused focused pre like like imminently curated cubes yeah then i could see it but anyway yeah so we played a lot uh your record was better this time it was yeah i actually won a game so (laughs) that's good (laughs) we got did we get two or three in uh we got three in Mm -hmm. and we started a lot later this year than we did in uh, prior years so we didn't get it get to as much of it as we normally would yeah we got to your house at like eight or nine or something Oh, I have like, to say, I like, I really, really, really have to appreciate your tenacity in making that moisture farm deck work. I mean, if you're going to make a deck work, it has to be moisture farming. Like, <laughs> take a deck archetype that they did not support at all with cards, <laughs> and then somehow just shimmy in support for it. It's great. You do have Tashi Station in that deck, right? Nope. <gasps> Sorry. That that deserves a place on theme alone, doesn't it? Well, you got to get your power converters. Well, <laughs> anyways, that was Star anyways. Wars CCG. <laughs> that was Star Wars CCG. Uh, and then Ian arrived the next day, and more in uh, uh, informal. I guess is the word I'm reaching for. Card gaming ensued. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This is true. Yeah, we played some Marvel that day. I think was the... Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh-huh. Let's, 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 let's have a little debrief on did, that. Did we play Marvel? Little, did Marvel little play bit of goodness. <laughs> I think more so, so the latter. I feel Marvel so, played us. That's what happened. I've I've recovered from this, thankfully, because I've, <laughs> I have a lot of money in Marvel at this point. So it, I'm really glad that that wasn't the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, there were moments where it was like, oh my God, I never want to play this. Because we, we were so, so excited about the X-Men box. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, to to the point where I had saved, I hadn't touched any of the uh, encounters, the the villains in that box. To the despite the fact that I had been playing with the heroes and player cards for like two weeks, just so we could all play it together. So this was like a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're so Justin comes over and we're playing four player, and we roll out Sabretooth. I've got the the X Men animated series playing in the background, like <laughs> everything's perfect. And then Sabretooth happened. <laughs> oh, man. Imagine imagine a big bad guy that heals on every single person's, like, turn, essentially, in the mythos yeah. phase. And mm-hmm. the goal is to get him down to zero health. But he heals every single, like, he heals four times per turn, per round. It's ridiculous. And in a way that churns through the encounter deck significantly faster. Mm-hmm. Which means that not only is is he healing and like I guess like I don't know Marvel's weird with scaling. I want to say it's proportional, but it certainly didn't feel like it was proportional. Take that as you will. Uh, uh, but on top of that, then he was adding additional scheme to the 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 oh, sorry additional threat to the scheme by churning through the encounter deck like crazy fast. Mm-hmm. 
We eventually beat him with an asterisk, but it was a slog of like, what, did we crest three hours? I think yeah, we crested yeah, I'm four. Pretty sure. Yeah, did it was close to four. four? Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Oh, no. I think it was almost exactly four hours. Oh no, that's yeah. too long for a Marvel game. Guys. Yes, it is. <laughs> that's yes, it too is. Long. I will also <laughs> note it was a. It was a. It was an asterisk, but it was a light one. What yes. was the asterisk? I don't remember now. We just well, we, we walked we replayed back the, the last order. turn yeah. purely because it was the first time we were playing this scenario. First time we were looking at these decks. And it was oh, just, yeah. if things had come, if we had played, like, two cards in a different order, we got through. Oh, right. And, yeah, you know, with fine. with information that was readily on the board, we yes. just missed it. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's like like a light asterisk. A yeah. A footnote, if you will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, despite, like, oh, God, we had so much excitement through, like, the first 90 <laughs> minutes of that game. And then it just, like, <laughs> I, I could feel the energy of the room just, like, stair-stepping down. Yeah. Every, t- every, swear to God, it happened at every turn of, like, when you have to discard the card to heal him. I could just feel everyone going, uh, 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 uh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just every turn. It was, it was, anyway. So, um... I, I have since played Sabretooth in lower player accounts, and I can confirm that, at least in my experience, it is a more civilized experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have no interest in playing four-player Sabretooth ever again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not even once. Mm-hmm. You and I ended up playing a few more games, and that box mm-hmm. is really mm-hmm. good. Yes. Uh, like Sunday night after everyone left, but... Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, Justin. I know I was I was really worried that because Justin was the one who like in when everyone was sagging in like the last little bit of that game. Justin was was the one who was like, no, we're fucking beating this. Everyone, pay attention. All right, you do this, you yeah. do this, and like Justin went into Scott mode. <laughs> Justin, <was> yeah, <laughs> he went to Scott during uh, City of Archives mode. That's what happened. <laughs> Just five minutes in the tank. He's like, okay. And we did it, and, like, largely because Justin went into that mode, but I was so worried walking away from that game. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be able to play any more of this with Justin. That was it. I don't go into that mode often, but when I do, (laughs) I sound Canadian. (laughs) All right, you hosers. Can you... In retrospect, even though it was maybe not the best gaming time, it makes for one hell of a memory uh, that we will all talk about in in regards to Arkham, or, or Marvel, rather, so... Uh, then well, we moved I, on to I our... mean, we talked about it, it regarding Arkham the, the rest of the time. We, we kept saying as we played Arkham, well, here comes Sabretooth. Yeah. <laughs> and also the entire time we were playing Marvel, like, oh, God, doesn't like Arkham spoil you for like civilized player scaling? <laughs> it really does. Oh, yeah. Which, of course, leads us into Friday. Uh, which is Arkham Knights proper. We showed up a little bit earlier. We got to uh, see in a lot of people, which was really cool mm-hmm. uh, to to come back after how many like basically three years at this point. Yeah. Um. And and see a lot of people that we've not seen in the flesh for for a very long time. So I I very much enjoyed just rolling into Arkham Knights and and kind of tooling around the room for the first hour. Or have ever met like I met uh, Tika for the first time. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. That's true. We got to meet a lot of new people who we know through the community, but not uh, not in the flesh yet, mm-hmm. which was really cool. Um, so we've got uh, Arkham Knights. The first day was basically just uh, a fortune and folly night mm-hmm. for for LCG players, right? Like that's that's basically what Friday was. Ian, how was that for you? Watching everyone crack open your baby <laughs> it was great it was everything i dreamed of um a little bit nerve-wracking of course to have people actually like delve into it and wondering how they're going to react to it but yeah it was i've been waiting a while because I, th- I think everyone knows like once you're done um working on a, a product it takes a while i think i'm trying to remember when i finished and submitted everything it was back in earlier this year sometime so I guess it wasn't that long away, but it feels like a long time. So, but yeah, it was a lot of fun, and I actually got to play um, through it uh, as well. And how was that for you? How was it seeing your product in like literal print the first time? Um, I mean, I know you've done it for Lord of the Rings before. 
Yeah, the this was a little bit different because it was like, um, of course, Max gave me a lot of help and support and ideas and some other folks at FFG, but it really was my baby in terms of like original conception all the way to the end. So it was like the first thing I've really worked on that extensively that like the final product is just like kind of taking it from that original vision all the way to the end. Um, so yeah, it was such an amazing feeling. Um, and everything that I dreamed of, uh, and (laughs) it's just, it's always such a weird experience too, because when you, when you play test, things like i did uh, obviously like a ton of play testing of fortune and folly in my own scenario um but it's you know it's with no art it's with just like just play test templated cards um thrown together but it's always such a different experience when you finally get to play the final thing and all all the art is amazing um so everything turned out so so great so that experience of actually playing through and I'll, sometimes when i play like create a scenario you know i've created like a lot of custom scenarios for lord of the rings and arkham at this point um you have and, you're, you're <laughs> prolific dude and, and you know worked on a few like official stuff um but a lot of times by the time i'm done i don't want to touch it or play it ever again <laughs> cuz because in order to make something good like you have to play it a lot and play test it a lot mm-hmm. and just iterate and you just kind of live with it for a long time and so you kind of get sick of it um but fortune and folly is a little bit different like i'm i'm actually stoked and looking forward to like get it to the table and play it myself even in, even though it's something i created because I don't know. I'm really proud and how it turned out. And it's, it's fun to play, just play through. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but yeah. <laughs> it's fun. But give fun me your horn. It. I'll toot it. <laughs> no, that, that scenario is freaking great, dude. Uh, uh, I'm very, very happy to, to be in a place where my favorite standalone scenarios in the game were created by alternating friends. I mean, Maxine's a friend too, obviously, but you yeah, know, she, right. she's involved in everything. Yeah. <laughs> Alternating friends makes it sound like they're only sometimes your friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Nick did leave the show. He did leave the show. <laughs> so. We got to switch off what days. Like, Nick has like Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And, yeah. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and every second weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got shared custody. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, much fun as we were having, uh, Scott, you and I played with uh, Case, and yeah. Ian and Nick and Justin played a game. Um, unfortunately, we we kind of set ourselves up for a little bit of failure there, not knowing how long it would be to play that whole scenario. We didn't checkpoint, which we should have, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, that that's hindsight speaking. We didn't get to finish our first plays of Fortune and Folly, much to our chagrin. We had to move on to our panel, which hopefully y'all have heard. That was a really fun time. Super excited that we got to do that and hope that that sets the precedent that we might be invited to do it again. Yeah, that was really fun to do. Yeah, and I know I gushed about it on the day. But I, I do think it's it's a very special thing and a very, very fun thing that the developers for this game are so accessible and excited to be accessible to, mm-hmm. to the community and talk about that kind of stuff. So great no one, pleasure. No one was dragged kicking and screaming onto that no. stage. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Tika's saying most groups didn't have to have time to finish Fortune or Folly even without a panel. <laughs> I mean it's a it is two scenarios. It's meaty, yeah. yeah. Like it's 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 Egypt in one scenario. Yeah. I mean I think like like the first half is a bit shorter. Mm-hmm. Like it's only like nine, eight, nine doom? Somewhere around there? Yeah, but a lot's happening in yeah. those turns. That's the thing, like there is just a lot going on. But the thing is it doesn't feel overwhelming though. Mm. And, it yeah. bumps up against the ceiling for my brain, but mm. it's still in it. Yeah. And also, like I know, I know, I talked about it in the panel, but like the the poker mechanic tickles a part of my brain that I didn't <laughs> know Arkham could tickle. Yeah, that that is really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was funny because at our table um, when we were playing Fortune and Folly, um, Nick, Justin, and I like. Uh, 
I think our biggest like moments of cheering for were from like winning poker hands, like not even the other yeah. stuff we yeah. did. Yeah, one hundred percent. Pulling an elder sign, regular Arkham. Yeah. Royal flush, only in fortune and folly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you have the looks across the table of like, would Arkham be better if we played it in a casino? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> would Arkham be better if we added gambling? Actual oh, gambling. <laughs> but what if you just like rented a casino and played normal board games in it? That that'd have a specific energy, wouldn't it? It really would. That kind of. What would the dealers cool. do? <laughs> what would the dealers do? Just they, shuffle everyone's decks for them. Just they, walk they around run shuffling the, decks all night. They fish they out the, the chaos tokens. Phase. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the oh. chaos bag is just a roulette wheel. <laughs> yeah. If it was a roulette wheel, do you know how long games would take? <laughs> oh my god. Like, how many times would you be like, I'm just going to investigate three times? It's like. And then the casino could have a cooler walking around for anyone who has too many good poles. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the muscle just removes you. Oh, yeah. And I, they just come over and put put um uh, what do you call it the 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 guys from City of Archives one of those cards on your investigator. <laughs> just swap <laughs> you out. <laughs> just swap you out for a couple turns. Look out for anyone need... who's not playing taboo who has double or nothing. Do we just in their decks. need to have a future BusterCon at a casino? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right. Well, that's the thing I didn't know I wanted. You've already half planned it, so I guess there we go. I mean, be careful because random things we joke about have a way of actually happening. Right? <laughs> they, they, they do sometimes, don't they? They sometimes become the best things we've ever done. <laughs> Anyway, so it was really fun to do the panel. I was sad that we didn't get to play our first uh, uh, Fortune of Folly all the way through, uh, but I've very much enjoyed it since then. Then, of course, Saturday was, of course, Iron Man. Mm-hmm. That it and, was. And what do you say about Iron Man? Oh, so many things. Let's start. Yeah. Uh, it went well. Yeah. Uh, uh, but not like not like Carcosa well. No. Remember Remember when we prepared for Iron Man Carcosa and we were like so worried and we we covered all our corners and we're just like, okay, this is going to be rough, guys. And we just throttled that entire campaign. Mm -hmm. This one was the opposite for me where I walked in and as we noted going in, we were like, <laughs> oh, we're, we keep saying, oh, it's just done, which yeah. it's probably going to bite us. I don't feel like any any of those scenarios was a like... Okay, you know, tap in. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, you're right. I don't think there was one that was easy. I'm trying to think. No. Yeah. Okay. So 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 walk it down. Yeah. Uh, uh, we did extracurricular activity second. Well, before you do that, walk through who we played. Mm. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, right. yeah. I played Rex. Uh, Rex did. He got clues. That's that's what Rex mm -hmm. did. Uh, my upgraded he upgraded really well with um, down the rabbit hole. Uh, I had mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it in my deck? The get more the victory point card, the purple one. Delve too deep. <laughs> Delve too deep. But like, Which we I, only fired off like twice. I think it was three times, but still was like, it three? Okay, it wasn't worth it. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> for having it in there like, that, that's our old dunwich sensibility coming in yeah yeah i think um, that's for me that shows how challenging it was that there were there were like a few other games where you had it in hand and we're like no mm -hmm. we can't risk it <laughs> like yeah, that's how tight it was I had in hand. Yeah. yeah um but down the rabbit hole was enough xp to just like supercharge my deck to the point where um going into the final scenario like i think i left an xp or two on the table like i had gone through all my planned upgrades all my <laughs> even maybe your upgrades. buys <laughs> yeah and then i was like i need to like proxy cards because i don't have anything else like <laughs> physically with me to upgrade into so this card is studious yeah or no it was uh i i i swapped in um safeguard mm -hmm. yeah so yeah uh rex worked like rex does uh, I played a para. Okay, so so before Iron Man, like like up to the like moment 
basically I was I was in the camp of I wanted to play Rex, uh, or sorry, not Rex, Dexter. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play Dexter Drake, and I could not for the life of me come up with a deck that I was happy with and was excited to play through a whole campaign with. I was doing too much futzing around with the new cards that came out and just like doing it horribly, and it was it was just a, it was a it was a wreck. So uh, at one point in in chatting with Nick leading up to the event, Nick was like, well, you like Parallel Agnes. Do you like Power Word? And I was like, oh, well, that's a thing I could do. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And it was great. (laughs) Yeah, you did. (laughs) It was really, really fun. Look, okay, so I'm going to say up front before I speak any words about how awesome I think Power Word is. Mm Mm-hmm. I personally do not think that there needs to be a wide call for its nerfing because the only reason that it is it was so good for me was, A, this is arguably the best, best campaign to use it in. 100%. And, B, I put 10 XP into it, okay? Yep. Back off. It should Don't be Don't taboo good. my card, okay? Please. Thank you. Yeah. It's not anyway, yellow. It was... <laughs> So. It was my it was my normal parallel Agnes deck, which I think Scott is probably the closest I have to a Dubs deck. That deck just goes, mm. and it can do like anything it needs to do in any given moment uh, for the most part, even in four player. Mm-hmm. Um, and then then you throw in Power Word in that campaign, and oh man, I was I was popping. I had a really good time with it. I I was impressed. So, oh well, thank you, yeah. Ian. Uh, I ran with Windy Traps deck, um, a kind of deck I've wanted to run for a long time. And since we were um, hashtag it's just done which, I was like, I'll I'll run with it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> overall, I was happy with how it performed. Um, I ended up doing a lot of just standard Windy things too. Of course, of course, like I used her uh, like Mulligan ability quite a bit. Um, particularly for the hunting horror thank you and yes and thank you yeah there's uh, there's actually a few instances in uh Dunwich beyond just like skill tests where it comes in handy um and then yeah I, w- I was running with makeshift trap i think that's what that card is called the uh the upgradable card um so i had upgraded it to like have poison so it took out a few enemies or it just sits there and like poisons them while they're sitting there um and then eventually i upgraded it to like have a net and explode but by the time we were getting towards the later scenarios it became um a little bit uh dodgier so yeah, it was it was an interesting build to run and just just figuring <laughs> dodging because <it> <laughs> it's an evade build. Yep, <laughs> I did do a lot of that because uh, she was kind of the go to evader. So, mm-hmm. uh huh. And then Justin, you played. I played Nacho Scott. Yeah, thank, you did. Thank you for building that deck for me. By the way, I uh, appreciate <laughs> it. So I didn't have to build ahead of time, and it did what it was supposed to do. Uh, there, I went a killing again. Yeah, it, it killed things with his hands. Yep. I I'm glad you. It, it seemed like you liked it while you were playing it, and it seemed to work well. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I I enjoy Nacho anyway. I was familiar with the stuff, so that helped. And then, um, it was nice because I just I had a directive and could be pointed in a direction, and so then it. Yeah. I I could. Um, play play the game when it was my turn and then assess the board state i could keep track of stuff running on discord for us in the meantime and every once in a while i'll be like how about i go kill this thing like just yeah. my that but was my little bit of contribution to strategy was okay we don't need someone to kill it but i can yeah <laughs> you're like what are i could though what are all these green things on the location those are clues <laughs> justin what are, what what are those for those yeah. are stepping stones. Oh, that's sto- boring. Stepping yeah. stones on the way to my next punching target. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I did. Would, I yeah. got, hey, I got two clues to that entire campaign, so I helped. That's true. That's yeah. true. Final scenario, right? Uh, or. Well, if I need two in the final, then I got three because I definitely got one at one other random interval. Forget how or why, yeah. but. But as Nacho, that's impressive. Mm hmm. So uh, uh, it was really fun to, yeah, yeah, finally on mentions the Discord presence. Iron Man's really fun when you, like, are sitting in there and sharing your results and you get to read through. 
Um, of course, we we kicked it off rather, I suppose, with the the drawing of the weaknesses that bears mentioning. Mm-hmm. We had a couple. We had a couple people throw weaknesses back this year, and we had some people take weaknesses that I would have thrown back mm-hmm. in a second mm-hmm. without thought. Well, so. who was it? I feel like it might be uh, Pax. There's someone who's active on our Discord. Remember when mm-hmm. we did it? Uh, the drawing of the weaknesses during. Uh, our online buster con and it was the zoe player and they threw back a weakness and got uh a dendromorphosis yeah right oh, no. so i think enough people have seen that happen that it's, it's like, like i might end up with something worse it's like this is a bad weakness but there is a worse one you know <laughs> i feel so. like you kind of have to figure out for your deck build what are like your top two or three weaknesses that would crush it yeah because every deck build's got some number of cards where it's like this would just be unfun yeah and there's Um, a bunch of weaknesses that are just bad but then there's the breaking ones right and like Mm -hmm. you just gotta eat the bad ones i mean then then there's the ones where we have that picture of ian that i will love forever where Mm -hmm. you just see his soul leaving his body because he drew (laughs) the wrong thing yeah that was when you got amnesia right yeah amnesia (laughs) amnesia in safina uh no um um rita track Rita. Yeah. Rita. Yeah. That's right. It was TFA. Okay. Yep. Yep. Oh, no. Because we were worried about archives having that mm-hmm. in. Yeah. Yeah. It's no good. It's no good. Uh, but we, we even had someone keep doomed, didn't we? Yes. Am I remembering that correctly? I believe so. But they weren't playing. Like, they're like, yeah, I have no card draw in my deck. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Because yeah. I always forget that Doomed doesn't move as fast as my brain once thought it did. Mm-hmm. But it's still, like, it's a threat, so. If you're if you're a slow draw, it's, like, five. You need to hit it five times. Like, you need five games. Mm-hmm. Or five. Uh, five times scenario. where you see the weakness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't even uh, remember what I drew this year. <laughs> that's how. I was going to say, that sounds. I, I, I forget what I drew, but that's, that sounds like the one I had was doomed i had one of the ones that evolves um oh did you have price oh you had um yeah pri- uh the one that gives you bonus xp right oh yeah, yeah. yes there we are uh, that's the one to... that's the one yep i know i know what this is uh, offer you it's... can't refuse you can't refuse there it is there it is i forget yeah, what my so. weakness is i remember it not mattering Fair yeah i think we I got say I had like light this year yeah. Yeah, I think mine was like internal injury or haunted or something with, you know, with my Agnes healing spell storm was not a big deal. Yeah. Mine was a double action remove because I remember Justin you got rid of mine a bunch of times. Yep. Yeah. I punched it with my actions. Yeah, just like, <laughs> punched that re- re- just right in its mouth. Did I get <laughs> nihilism? It was nihilism, wasn't it? Yeah, you got nihilism. Yeah. Totally you did. And I remember, like once or twice, you were like, "I'm gonna sit on it this turn," and yeah. then it happened, and then it hit you. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> That's how weaknesses work, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so so th- through the campaign, uh, so we started with uh, the house, house always, always wins. wins. Yep. Which went okay. We struggled a little bit in the early game to accrue the number of clues that we mm. needed. Like, we had really bad luck gambling in that one. Except for me. Yeah. I had great luck. Except, yeah. <laughs> Scott was on fire. And the yeah. rest of I had just terrible luck. Yeah. I think I had, like, five or six <laughs> failed gambles in a row. Because I, I was using my mulligan ability on it, and I still failed. Yep. I watched Ian, like, just toss, like, ten resources yeah. down the drain as a 12-year-old. Yeah, it turns yeah. out the little gambling. orphan's not great at gambling. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we managed to squeak out of there, at least. Yep. And we got, uh, is it, no. What's the name of the doctor we got for? Uh, Morgan. Yes, Justin got Dr. Morgan. Yeah. So the we got we got pounded with the the big abomination enemies when they came out was the main thing that made that hard. Like the the criminal enemies are are one thing, but we got I think we we pulled the servant of the lurker, 
uh, as our one that just hops out and then mm-hmm. like in that mythos phase then we pulled a conglomeration yeah um and you know conglomerations are tough anyway but like ian was kind of was level zero evade wendy and mm-hmm. we weren't and you know i i think i was still setting up so like to chew through 11 hit points was a bit of a thing mm-hmm. we got there uh but it but it it felt a little tighter than the house always wins normally does so then moving on to extracurricular activity. This is the one I feel like was the closest throttle. We had a couple dicey tests, but I don't feel like anything really threatened us in that one. And Sean, I'm going to ju- jump in real quick. I'm just reading the, yeah. our results for House Always Wins. Yeah, was, you kept the best notes, dude. Yeah, Please. no no player cheated. 4XP got dicey at the end due to Surge, and we had to bail on Delve. Yeah, that's what it was. Right, Scott yeah. was like, should I delve? And we're like, no. Nope. And then extracurricular activity, 4XP, baleful welcome caused the most painful peril decision yes. we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Ended okay, but it was, in all caps here, close. Yep. So so we have to talk about baleful. Yes, we do. Because we failed to talk about baleful. <laughs> prior to a lot of turns where we drew baleful mm-hmm. and for, for and, those uh, of us myself, for those, myself included yeah, who for, already forgot what it is <laughs> for those who who do not remember what it is uh it is a peril treachery and you choose uh two actions uh and i think the All list right. is move investigate evade fight there's a fifth right? one and play is yeah there, is it play play yeah. play yeah okay so you have to choose two of those five that no investigator can do that turn and it's peril um so so without having discussed that which, which to my mind like i think possibly one of the best designed peril cards in the game that shit gave us trouble even when we started playing yeah. around it. it was, even when we were like, all right, what do we think we should do for, for Baleful when it comes up? Because we, le- we learned our lesson hard the first couple times. Well, it was <laughs> tough, too, because um, we happen to have two investigators in parallel, Agnes and Nacho, who are like, they need to play because um, they're so uh-huh. event yeah. heavy. Um, yep. Yeah. So I mean, I feel like fifty percent of our Dunwich Ironman was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> we have to talk about Baleful and plan in case someone yeah. draws it." Like that was every mythos face once we started yeah. uh, catching on to it. <laughs> well, and then it was in our heads, and even when we didn't draw it, we're like, "Okay, what can't we do this turn?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we talk about so much that we convince ourselves that we drew it. And, uh, yeah, I remember that, Justin. And we're like, wait, what can't <laughs> we do? At least twice that yeah. happened. Like, what can't we do? It's like, no, we oh, I can't do that. Like, no, we didn't actually draw we, the we treasure draw this yeah. turn. <laughs> oh, my God. Impactful. I, Impactful. I think it was more than twice. I think that happened to me about five <laughs> times. We're like, what can I do? We didn't draw it. Oh, right. <laughs> it was what, definitely a thing. What a card. What a card. And again, I think probably one of the more meaningful uses of peril in the game thus far. And I will say, like, maybe I should have said this at the beginning. Maybe I should say it at the end. I'm going to say it now. Uh, I still think that the Dunwich return to changes made the biggest difference for the campaign. Yes. I agree. I'll just throw that out there. Yep, I agree. And like a, an impactful multiplayer, because I don't think it's going to have as big an impact in like one or two player, uh, but in four player, Baleful Welcome with a with a four player spread of decks that want to do various things this next turn. Like that's a big card. Yep. Anyway, yeah. we love Baleful and we hate Baleful. Yeah, it's <laughs> you love to hate it. <laughs> Fantastic design. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic design. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> thanks i hate it yeah uh so then we moved into miskatonic museum which i feel was okay uh mm-hmm. the re- the return variant again doing a good job making the uh the hunting horror actually a little bit more threatening yeah. well the like, hunting horror came out on the first mythos phase yeah. well first there is mythos that. card draw like it <laughs> there was is that too <laughs> like the earliest chance it could possibly come out mm-hmm it I'm happened. good at those moments. Sorry. Yeah, it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it gave it, it gave a lot of trouble and um a lot more than Like Ian, you and I were were primarily engaged with it because we didn't want to kill it a lot, so we couldn't just like toss Justin at it. Yeah, and uh, and well the other thing for that scenario is I I was bringing a trap deck and uh 
Mm. Doesn't do much for a one scenario where enemy. there's just one elite enemy. So I spent a good amount of my time just evade tanking the thing and just keep trying to evade it. And then, and then, yeah, because it does have that ability where you have to draw a token and it can evade. Like quite a few times, I use Wendy's Mulligan ability to, uh, to uh-huh. try to get around that. It was clutch. It was clutch. I remember it saved us at least twice. Yeah, my notes for this one are we got six XP, including from Delve, so did get to fire it off. But then by the end, Nacho was in rough shape and got pulled to the finish line because even though I wasn't engaged with the horror, there was a lot of other stuff that was going on. And Sean, I think that was yeah. one where I was like, would you please heal me yet again? <laughs> yep. Yeah. My mirror was doing lots of work in that scenario. Yep. I think the the treacheries were the ones that were hitting us really hard. The, yeah, that's right. Yep. The, the, the one that just like straight deals to horror. And and like it's increased if the the haunting horror is at your site, like yeah. And also like straight up disabled a little bit of my deck too because I couldn't put power word on mm-hmm. on it. Yeah, that scenario so. just disables a lot of different decks. Yeah, mm-hmm. like or a lot of different team strategies. Like it, it, yeah. Well, just having the one enemy, and you know, obviously, if you only have one enemy, it absolutely needs to have elite. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Right there. Yep. So yeah. Anyway, went pretty well. Essex. <laughs> we were prepared to just like second turn fold if yep. needed. And then, oh, ladies and gentlemen, and then <laughs> power word popped the fuck off. <laughs> I got my power word on a. Uh, it was either a grappling horror or uh, whatever the bigger one was. I think it was just a grappling horror, just so, like yeah. the little three, 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 one, one damage, one horror. I got my my uh, a power word on that, and then any time a cultist would spawn ahead of us, I would just send my monster into the next car and kill it <laughs> because the monster can move there even though we couldn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just being able to do that the two times that it mattered gave us the space to actually take this scenario on on. It, like we turned it into a victory it was tight but it went well well and there were also the scott credit to you for the get over here's in the yes. nacho deck those were yeah. both those were both very helpful my mm-hmm. notes for this and i think i have a picture showing this is essex 5 xp rex investigating with ancient glyphs to end game and auto failed but recovered <laughs> oh yeah we got the we got the engine car that just had a lot of clues on it. Yeah, yeah. Scott's like, I will end this in one action. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then he didn't. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> and I think there was another time too where I went all in and also got the auto fail. And I believe the second time I was like, should you? And you're like, I'll be fine. Ten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pretty oh. sure what I don't know. I can't tell uh, which one of those it is. But here's Scott being like, oops. What did I do? And Sean walking away from the table. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, oh, it's oh, fine. I, It'll be that fine. is that moment. Yep. Yeah. Th- that wasn't the, the train one. That, that was the one where no, you that's... told me you should. Is that train? No. no. The, okay, so the picture that's shown right now is Essex. Uh, obviously, I got upset at both, but the the other one, I I warned you ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> this This is like, you know that little short we have on YouTube where... <laughs> You you walk away and then I'm just laughing and you just hear you screaming in the distance and I'm just laughing like an idiot. This is it in real life. Like that this was is... very similar energy. <laughs> yeah, this is how we we deal with stuff. Yeah, in, like auto fails in Arkham. Two two different stories. Here. So <laughs> particularly when you disproportionately draw a lot of them, yes. like I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like with Essex, it was kind of a slow start. It took us a while to get going, because I think we started with one of the locations that has a bunch of clues on it, and then the second location was the one where you have to take the agility test, like the sequence of agility tests, and then if you fail, you just straight up die. Um, mm-hmm. so oh, we, we got yep. stuck there! Yeah, so we, could, I, yeah we, got, we got stuck there for a minute. We kind of needed to work around that one a little bit, and dance around it, and so, yeah, it took us a while to get going, but then once we got our momentum up, then it was yeah. Pretty- I had to do that test three times, and I failed the first one all three times. I had to <laughs> test agility six times as Rex. I remember that. It was nerve-wracking, and it was our and, second location, and I'm yep. like, the Kluver, right? Like, how are you guys going to move forward? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was... Oh. 
it was a thing and yep. the amount of times that like your rex's curse would show up right oh. as you were about to enter into a rough bunch of tests anyway like yeah uh. but anyway yeah. so we managed somehow to snatch the uh the victory from the jaws of defeat there and uh then of course that leads us to blood which maybe was the one that was closest to closer I don't know. I feel like we throttled extracurricular a little bit more than uh, blood, but blood was not any big deal. No, it was no. You know, we, we had a couple. Well. We had a couple moments with with. Uh, I'm trying to think with the um, night gaunts. Is that the the bigger enemy? Oh in that one? yeah, yeah. It was the night gaunts that gave us a little bit of trouble. And, and the the what's the one that returns you to the treachery, where it returns you to the central oh, location? It's like mm. the wings, Known wings of, of darkness. Yeah. 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 I, I did find in this scenario and some other scenarios in Denwich that the uh, makeshift trap I was running was quite good for the whippoorwills because it just does yes. like the mm-hmm. auto one damage and just kills them. So whippoorwills overall weren't that big a thing for us compared to some of my past experiences. Yeah, my notes for this one were no sacrifices, 4 XP, finished before the first agenda flipped. Yeah, we blasted <gasps> oh, right. it. Maybe this yeah. was the one that yeah. we just absolutely throttled. We but, did, we yeah, did draw were... a lot of kidnapping early. I remember that. Like, I, I, was, I, was it you, Scott, who kept drawing kidnapping? I know someone drew it. Like, it was me. Oh yeah, it was me. Yeah. Oh, that's I, right. I first turn flopped my Diana Esperance <laughs> that I had just bought at a premium, by the way, because it was the one card that I didn't uh, that didn't conform to uh, down the rabbit hole. Every other card in my deck was just an upgrade. That was the one that wasn't. I paid extra for it. Played down first turn. First two treacheries I, b- I draw are, <laughs> are kidnapped. And I was like, come on! Anyway, so it was a, re- it was a, a real bad time to, to have those many kidnappings drawn. When I had just played down my like signature ally, which I love so much in that Agnes deck, mm-hmm. I, it, was, uh, it was not what I wanted to see. You know what? Maybe that's what this picture is. Hold on. I have a whole series of you, Sean, where it looks like you're in agony. And, oh, no. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out. It might be this. Let's see. So this will oh, no. be in live podcast chat later for anybody. Uh, give me one moment. We can edit the time down can later. Can we not? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, no, we have to. It's it's what the people <laughs> want. We got to give it to them. Yeah, fix it in post. Hold on. I was just, I, I'm pretty sure like the... the, the it might have been three times. It might have been like an absurd amount of times. It was yeah. at least two. Yeah. It was, it was at, at least, least two. two, possibly three. And by like the second or third time, I had cleared myself of willpower icons. I hadn't had a chance to play down any boosts yet. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I... Yep. <laughs> yeah, I see the kidnapping card. Yep. Yep. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm drawing this again. There's no way I'm going to pass it. I, I went into that test at one up, and I believe I drew a zero. Uh, it's and a skull. Like, yeah. It's which a is... skull, which at that point would have been. Yes. I think it's number of sacrifices done or something. or Which would have been a fucking zero, baby. Yeah. It wasn't much. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that was fun for me. And then after that, my deck popped. So, so we're, we were good, but like that was, you know, you have one of those scenarios where you just feel like you can't get a moment mm-hmm. and it was just like, please one, one mythos phase where I do not draw kidnapped. That's all I want. Yeah. This one had a very similar energy. I felt like we were like, okay, we have to do this and this, and we we're just really good at doing it. Mm-hmm. And then before we know it, we're done. Mm-hmm. Um, very similar to the Doom of Etsley during TFA Iron Man when we yeah. escaped before Snake Bomb showed up. Yep. And we're like, oh, that can happen. And then, yeah, we beat it before there was a sacrifice. So We sure did. I've never done that. Nor I, I don't think. Oh. I think I always lose at least someone. Mm-hmm. But we, uh, we nailed it. So then on to... <laughs> undimensioned and unseen which is where my my finest hour oh was. boy yep that was fun to, <laughs> it was fun to watch okay so again again i feel the need to preface by yeah. saying this is literally the best case scenario <laughs> for the card that i'm about to talk about having fun with so please don't taboo my card it's fine 
10 XP before I got here. Okay, but also, like, in, in defense of that as well, uh, mm-hmm. this scenario is notorious for everyone finding weird ways to be. Yes. Like, this is There's just, quite a true. few cards that, yeah. This is that's just true. yet another card onto the pile that already broke this scenario because those the the beasts aren't elite right like yeah. there's so many cards mm-hmm. like does this work wow that's weird right like and those cards aren't tabooed so i yeah. agree with you sean i don't think that this is this is out of the ordinary this is just like haha look at this this is, funny. This is just us clowning on early game design yeah. and then bitching about what they did in response mm-hmm. it's the dynamic we have with the developers and it's not great but it's what we have well um, that's, that's what iron man is right just raw, <laughs> exactly like, waffle stomping some scenarios okay so. look look you you say that but i feel like your interaction with mj that day was like half the reason that the the key got as hard of a taboo as it did okay yeah fair yes <laughs> only half yeah only so, half all i'm saying is don't use this as any ammo to say that power word needs uh tabooing because like i spent 10 xp on this card and it was how i played the game that's what a 10 xp card should do also the, um, this anyway. thing is nowhere near as powerful as key so there you go yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's that too. Anyway, so first turn I walked into the location with the first abomination and made it my bitch for the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it was great. Like, <laughs> just an action to not have to worry about that uh, abomination. Am I using the right word? Brood. Brood. Brood is the one I want. Yes. Yeah. So so yeah, that was that was really fun for me. I basically pitted the broods against one another, and then when we we got to the point where we had like three broods in the victory display, and we're like, all right, do we just resign? Because we had kind of just planned on not doing much here anyway. Yeah, we were we were strongly considering just skipping it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we did discuss that, and then we started doing pretty well. Um... We happened to have a few investigators with high willpower, and we had a bunch mm-hmm. of clues around. Um, I took out one with Waylay. So, speaking of a card that can just, uh, yep. <laughs> yep. that can just uh, counteract the broods. So, yes, yeah, we uh, we did pretty well considering yeah. we were thinking about tapping out early just for time's sake. Yeah, and I felt like we're like, should we tap? Out? Okay, well, let's just let's just see how well we do. And we, we got one. We're like, okay, well, let's just, maybe just one more. Then we got it. Like, well, I think we can do one more. And then eventually, I think we got four. I we believe got, so. We we did, my note is no resolution, which turns into R1. We got four XP yeah. and one brood got into the wild. Yeah. So, yeah, we, so four or five. We, we just like, <laughs> just one more time, four broods. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty great, and, and it was the most fun I'd had with Power Word, just like the idea of taking over an enemy and making them yours. Undimensioned and Unseen are the most powerful non-elite enemies, I think, generally in the game, so so there you go. It was a really fun time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think it's the first time I've ever enjoyed that scenario, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yes, you're not wrong. And it, Sean, it's, it's up there on my least favorite, but yeah. Yeah, to your, to your point about them being the most powerful, we have a, a comment in chat about if Return to Dunwich came out today, there's a chance it would say the broods are elite, or that would be yeah. a, possibly a chance. I think. And I guess to me that also speaks to if that is a possibility based on how we talk about it and sort of hey, these cards can break the scenario because mm-hmm. of that uh, keyword not being there. That almost speaks to me of oh, that would be the fix then, rather than mess with the player cards. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it depends. It, it's a good point, and I'm only offering a counter just for the sake of conversation, not because I disagree with it. Uh, but I, I do think that it kind of depends on the design philosophy a little bit, because what exists currently in Return to Dunwich is that there's a treachery that pops out and gives a bonus and the elite keyword. So it's like, all right, sure. well, we're sure. going to leave you guys space to play around with these powerful enemies with in, in some creative ways that you might have, but they might get elite and you might get foiled. We didn't have that happen because I think I warded the one that tried to pop out, but Oh um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah it, it's there. It's mm-hmm. there. And you know what? Look, okay. Here's the thing as if this isn't my game, but if it were my game, I would hedge on the side of making player cards feel powerful and cool. 
uh, rather than making sure they were all perfectly balanced. Mm-hmm. That's just me. Yep. That's where I'm at. Uh, so, so I had a really <laughs> good time with Power Word and Undimensioned and Unseen. <laughs> Which, of course, leads us to where Doom awaits. Mm-hmm. Ooh, let me, lead was... in with, let me lead in with the note about yep. this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where Doom awaits, R1, 4 XP, sprinted up the hill and flying elbow kicked <laughs> Silas. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this scenario is one that we kind of just flew through, I feel like. And, like, I was worried, a little bit worried. I was like, oh, man, like, uh-huh. you know, what if what if the deck, com- like, the encounter deck combos out and we lose this one and, like, this is the, you know, how many times did we say, oh, it's just Dunwich and we end up losing on scenario seven or something. But we did the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did. We I think this was another first agenda kill. Well, yeah, but the first agenda is 12 Doom, so I'm not going to, like, mm. pat ourselves on the back with it. Right. But, yeah. Well, sprinted up but the it hill. was fast. Sprinted up the hill. Elbow. Well, I think, too, I was able to go, like, at this point, my deck was flying high, and I could walk mm-hmm. into one of the side locations, get all the clues in one action, and walk out. Uh-huh. And so there wasn't much time waiting on the, the for clues in the middle area before yeah. moving up the hill. I mean, it was, it was, it went very well. Uh, and I don't think it had too many surprises for us. There mm-hmm. were a couple moments where those uh, treacheries that scale per player, which is an effect we see so rarely in Arkham felt pretty terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, but suffering through those, we managed to just like, <laughs> as mentioned, sprint up the hill and just, <laughs> <laughs> deliver the elbow as we like <laughs> yoloed through the portal yeah <laughs> yeet, <laughs> Just... <laughs> yeet. this yeah. was another scenario that had a fun trap application with those um enemies that try to march up the hill um because i just trapped them in my trap and they couldn't move yeah and <laughs> just yeah. eventually would get killed so that was fun yeah yeah that the worked really of well the key or whatever yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I think we were we were just kind of flexing on this scenario a little bit. <laughs> well, I think it was the, there was your traps that were keeping them at the bottom, yeah. and then Sean, I think you power worded an enemy, yeah. and that enemy was also fighting them, so it was like they were stuck yep. in a trap, and the enemy was just like <laughs> <laughs> gnawing them to death, and it was just like, what? oh, <laughs> that was particularly fun. Like, hey, stop yeah. fighting, guys! What? Why are you fighting? Yeah, stop hitting yourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then, return to Lost in Time and Space, though. Oof. That, this one got stressful. It did. Oh, man. It did. Yep. I will have the note for this when we talk about the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, there, I I don't know. It's hard for me to judge. It was stressful. Um, not even just from pure difficulty. One was because it was at the end of the night, of course. So we're trying to like yes. get through it, and our brains are a little tired. Um, I forgot how hard it is to track the freaking location connections of that thing yes. <laughs> and how big the yes. map came. I feel like that's where a lot came because we're like, oh, wait, actually, that's connected. So the enemy is going to come here. So there's a lot of like second guessing and having to like plan and then replan. And yeah. I, and we even, even had that really good graphic that Phileon provided us mm-hmm. and we were struggling. Yeah. This, I mean, this scenario still, I think, is the most thematic scenario that exists because i feel like i am lost in time and space when i play this one (laughs) yeah oh yeah i think if for some reason we were ever doing iron man of this again we would have like a big playmat version of that map to make it easier i will print a three by three (laughs) playmat with location connections already on it that actually sounds pretty fire yeah, we should add that. We should add that to the uh, the old merch swag yeah. idea. Add it to the swag bag for Casino Buster yeah. Con. Yeah, that's right. I mean, what a useless <laughs> playmat, though. Otherwise, <laughs> like one scenario, <laughs> one scenario in this campaign that like is like years and years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the tricky part here was that it makes you like everyone has to get clues at certain points, um, and. And our team was really set up to just, like, have Rex get the majority of clues. Uh, yeah. It was fine. It just required a little bit of uh, uh, working around it for this scenario. 
And then yeah. in the end, when Rex was the one who needed to get clues, <laughs> my note is, Scott, I can totally get clues and resign this round. Narrator, he did not. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so he was. Think... He was all. He was all set up to be the to just make it work, and then nope. Yeah, I think that was another one of my tentacle draws. It absolutely that was. That was the one where I was like, okay, look, you could split your risk over two tests here. Should yep. you? And you're like, nope. <laughs> Tentacle. Fortune favors the bold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then like the next turn, because I, I drew, I forget what it was, but I drew some cards and I had an equal amount of like high intellect cards again. And I was like, and I'll do it again. And that time I didn't draw the tentacle. But Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, through great effort and and manual clue finding, in the case of some of us, uh, we managed to squeak through that one, mm-hmm. and we got the the best conclusion, the mm-hmm. best resolution, as it were. And we wrapped up by eight thirty that evening. Mm-hmm. We had extra time after an Iron Man, mm-hmm. and we didn't skip a single scenario. Yeah, that's something. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think uh, I, I, I was. I'm overall. I'm just happy that it wasn't like a total route on our part. Like, uh, yeah. In retrospect, like the fact that it actually made it a little bit challenging <laughs> was nice. I think it made it more interesting. Yeah. It wasn't like an absolute dunk fest of just yeah. Oh, like easy game, easy life. Yeah. You, you know what we didn't mention as part of this Iron Man is the fact that we were all wiped out tired from the night before. Oh, like oh, I, yeah. I think we got what, like two or three hours of sleep, maybe. We accidentally went to bed at four a.m. Yeah, I remember when we like stayed up till four the night before oh. Iron Man? Yeah, that was a real fucking. So there was a guys. period around Blood of the Altar where I think I was just like. Oh, the most tired I've <laughs> ever been during an Iron Man, and I was like legit yeah. wondering whether I was going to be able to make it through. Um, <laughs> oh, no. But somehow we rallied like around Undimension and uh, Unseen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a good time, and uh, uh, people seemed to have a good time with it. I feel like the we we were probably in like the middle to early ish bracket of when people finished. I think so, yeah. I think that I think that tracks from uh who was still playing at uh at FFZ and then what results were in the Discord channel. I think that's fair. Yeah. So yeah. Good show, boys. Yeah. It was a good time. Uh two additional notes with it. I believe this was our largest in person Iron Man with the most people playing, didn't we land on that? By like four? Yeah, just, I mean, just barely, but considering we've had a pandemic yeah. in between the last yeah. time we did it in person, yeah, we had 70-some people playing in person there. Um, oh, then it was other, yeah. Yeah, others online. So, yeah, that was great. Uh, looking forward to having the next official one, since we were doing this as an mm-hmm. in-between one, but the next official one, which will be at BusterCon, I'm sure will be even bigger. And then my other note is this was the first time I got to Iron Man in person with you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what are your thoughts now? Because after doing it virtually, you were unsure whether you would I am, do it again. I am now more sure of it. The The virtual one took, took a bit of a, a toll. Um, well, it was 17 <laughs> fucking hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Like, as someone who enjoys Iron Man, it took a fucking toll. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That one hey, was... You, you want to oh. fill in for Nick on this? <laughs> and then I yeah. agreed. 17 and... hour backfill. Yeah. Cool. No, um, it's. I, I'm looking forward to uh, doing it again going forward uh, in, in person. That definitely uh, added to the enjoyment of it. Yeah. Well, wait till you get Innsmouth. So that'll be an Iron Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to do a lot of talking. Yeah. And I feel like I'm going to have to run probably two test campaigns. I've got, I've got my prior one that i'm going now but there's definitely gonna have to be one closer to when we actually strategize because insmith is going to be a thing it's going to have to be tight i think we're uh so we usually talk iron man prep as an episode that may have mm-hmm. to be a two-parter possibly yeah yeah it's it's a big one so mm-hmm. yeah all right yeah so so then saturday night we uh we just retired and i think 
like collapsed in in an exhausted heap when we got home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you boys uh, just went to catch up. I I was not part of the staying up until four a.m. crew, but you guys you were in yes. rough shape. So I think it was, hey, we're done. Go home, Justin. <laughs> Justin, you are once again the adult in the group. Yeah, actually, that's a good <laughs> surprising. Absolutely no. Yeah. Dad went to bed and the kids stayed up. Yeah, that's. I wish right. it were less true. Yeah. I I'm the Arkham dad. <laughs> That's right. Uh so then Sunday, unfortunately, Ian had to head out pretty early. Yep. Um then the rest of us went back to the the FFZ and we we played a fortune and folly, and then we played a blob, or did we play a, no we played a, a, a Machinations. Yeah, machinations. We did uh, uh three group machinations. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time for <gasps> me. a few of us yeah. and Nick as well. Mm. Um and then we uh, uh on our team we played with Xander, who's also also with FFG. Um the first time doing Epic Multiplayer. So what'd you guys think of Epic Multiplayer Machinations? Well and just before sorry Sean, before we dive in, so it was you yeah. and Xander and Or was it just the two of you? And you Casey. Oh, and Casey. Yep. Oh, yep. yeah. 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 Uh, yeah so yeah. that was one table, and then I was playing with uh, with Meka, and then mm-hmm. uh, it was Nick and Scott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's mostly to refresh my own memory of this, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. which is one of the cool things about the the epic scenarios because you can just play asymmetric numbers and it's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that one was fun because, like Scott, you were you guys were the ones to play the fastest. Yeah, me and Nick so, like, were just blowing through the scenario, and you we got... guys pounded through your parts of the scenario. Got to like the last doom on the last agenda, yeah, and then just had to sit and twiddle your thumbs while the rest of us got. <laughs> yeah, like I went and ordered food, ate a meal, and then like walked around the hall, talked to people, came back, checked with Nick. He's like, "No, they they still don't need us." I was like, "Okay," like it was the and then long. So... The longest round of Arkham ever because we're just like, well, I guess I'll think about my turn for 45 minutes. Well, and then suddenly we're like, oh, they removed a doom from our agenda. Go, go, go. Yeah, (laughs) because I I think it was we needed like one or two more turns to do the things we needed in the scenario for the other team stuff. I'm trying to be Mm -hmm. spoiler free, but you know what I mean? Like, obviously (laughs) things interact, right? So we need a little more time. And then I could be like, hey, we moved to Doom from your agenda. Like, oh, thanks. We did some things. And then we realized, like, oh, we could use one more turn. And then we went through the mythos phase. Like, well, guess we'll stop again. <laughs> because, Scott, so. you guys were the you were the past. My, yes. We were the present. And then, Sean, you guys were the future. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. then it was. You guys were way ahead. And it was. You needed more time. But it was dependent on you guys doing stuff. But you needed some yeah. stuff to come back to you. And. Yeah, that's what it was, too. Like, we, like, uh, the other groups needed to do some things for us before we could do the things that we needed to do for other groups or something. Yeah. Um, again, like, I will, this is my first time, so I have, I don't even know how the other two groups work. So, like, I'm still a bit in the dark of, like, what you guys were doing. But all I knew is I, we need to sit for a bit. And, yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoy that one in the epic. Yeah. I think, I think it's good in, uh, in just a, a normal standalone setting, uh, you you have to know it's going to be different, but it it is fun with the different groups. It's my new favorite epic one. So, Sean, what did you think of it coming back to it? I know we got to play it uh, last year when it came out, but now that you've had some time with it, what do you think? It's far more fun in in epic than in single single's cool and it's a big map and it'd probably be a fun like speed running challenge to see how much you can get done but it's very clearly designed to to be played in epic um we had a really good time uh i'm trying to think i played silas and i'm trying to remember who casey played i think like a clue focus daryl and then uh yeah that's right that's right we were team red and then um xander took my uh, Beastmaster Yorick deck. Um, so, I mean, it was a really fun team. The, the enemies are cool because depending on which time zone you're in, they interact differently and you kind of have to plan where you're going to go and what, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a fun epic. I think it is a good spiritual successor to what Labyrinths was trying to do without kind mm-hmm. of the 
riddles involved, if that makes sense. Yeah, I I mean, this is one of those examples of this game has been out for five or six years now. The the vaccine and the team with Arkham, like they've learned so much about their own game. And now this comes out and it's like labs was awesome when it came out, but it kind of like, once you kind of solved it, like it didn't, it didn't feel as fun. And like, I was a huge labs fan for a long time and now like, yeah, I'd still Mm -hmm. play it just for other people. Honestly. Um, Well, it's fantastic. Your first time through. Yes. Oh my goodness. And this one is too. Like, like I had a great Mm -hmm. time. Like I, I specifically reserved it until I could play it like this. And I'm very mm-hmm. glad I did. And now I'm looking forward to doing the other two groups as well. So it's just, this one is just, yeah, spiritual successor to Labs. And it's fantastic. Also, slight spoiler alert if you haven't played Machinations. But it's, it's really irrelevant because it's my own headcanon. But I'm fairly certain that Edwin Bennett is Exodalon. 100%. Mm-hmm. Just, go, just go ahead and chew on that one for a while. Mm-hmm. Tell yeah. me what you think. <laughs> I uh, I got to play my desperate Duke. Uh, Ooh, you're like like a uh, new generation uh, yeah. desperate Duke. Yeah, how'd it, that go? Uh, fantastic, especially when you can start in desperate from the very beginning because you because mm-hmm. you can play take it in the thick of it. In the thick of it, it's like like yeah, like that changes that deck so much when you don't have mm-hmm. to draw the the key of what's it called the Saint Hubert's key. In order yep. to get into desperate or like try to fail a treachery, but only by so much. Like I just yeah. Um, and I got to calling in favors uh Duke a bunch of times, <laughs> which was really funny because I love how that interacts. Um <laughs> to go find allies and and stuff. And Nick playing across from me, he played a uh who is it, Charlie Kane. A 49 XP Charlie Kane deck where he just That's threw like the in... most Nick thing yeah. ever. <laughs> he just threw in every ally he could. I think his deck is like 24 allies and like <laughs> six other cards. It's ridiculous. And <laughs> I mean it functioned. <laughs> like it Somehow. did it did things it needed to do. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. That's awesome. I was like, of course it's 49 XP Nick. He's like, oh yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so i'm mr shotgun yeah yeah all right well fantastic that was that was sunday and then of course scott you and i went home and and kind of polished off the rest of the marvel box which is the rest of the box is far better than Sabretooth. yeah it was, uh, Good to it know. was. <laughs> yeah uh magneto is no joke though he's a big boy oh. uh we we got to the point where scott and i had it took us like an hour and a half at two player to establish an equilibrium where we weren't digging out from the encounter deck. Mm-hmm. And w- it, like Scott, you said, I, I'm pretty sure we could have gotten him like, had we continued. But at that point it was one in the morning. Had, it just had to fucking go to bed. Y'all. Yeah. Like it's, I, I love Magneto as much as the next, he might be my favorite villain ever, but I couldn't. Yeah. I, I honestly believe we were at that point where it's like, okay, we we've were in lockdown now we can flip it over. Because I feel like that's a, what a lot of what Marvel games turn into, for me at least, mm-hmm. is like mm-hmm. you're fighting against the deck and then finally you claw yourself up to the point in every Marvel movie, you know, where all the heroes are like, yeah, we're ready to fight. And then they they trounce on the villain. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. that's how the card game works. Um, yeah. So super thematic. And we, we, are, we were cresting that point. I'm like, okay, we can kill him. And it's like, but it's also 1 a.m. And my flight's at like 7. So we should probably go to bed. <laughs> so let's, let's do this sleep thing. Yeah. I'm so proud oh. of you, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Arkham Stepdad. <laughs> Fother. Yeah. Uh, we had our challenge scenario as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that I thought was going to be way more challenging. Turns out it was not. Um... I need to take it back to the uh, to the drawing board, uh, and this was the horror in higher gears, where it was basically an unlimited drive down horror in higher gear, uh, or horrors in high gear, and the idea was basically the locations would leave as you drove past them, uh, the victory point locations, whether you got the victory points or not, it was irrelevant. They would just leave, uh, and eventually your deck would be, or the location deck would be 
a total deck of 12 cards, and six of them were long way around cards, which actually stop you for two turns. Like, it stops you, you can't advance for the rest of that turn, and you can't advance next turn. So it's the turn after you can actually advance the next one. And I thought, like, man, if that's, like, if every second one on average is that, like, there's going to be enough time for enemies to catch up with you and treacheries to actually trounce on you. Uh, turns out I was very incorrect. Uh, <laughs> there are many, many people who... Uh, played and went basically on infinite, if you will. Uh, but Big Kahuna was the one that reported the biggest one. Uh, he messaged me at something like 120 locations, and he's like, "Hey, is anyone else like this far? Like, I'll, I'll I can probably go more, but it's yeah." Um, oh, it, it was, was 100 even. Scott. It was a hundred even, but it was. Mm-hmm. I think the more Im- impressive part of that is we had. The multiple groups, uh, including including Big Kahuna, that would go infinite with it, but put in the time. I want to say it was something like seven hours or just, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just slow clapping here in the background. Like, yeah, well done. Like 100 locations. I mean, that's probably guaranteed 120 rounds of Arkham. Probably. Yeah. So, like by the time you, oh, yeah. But like, I mean, if it's, if it's 100, it was a long time. Um yeah, <laughs> Big Kahuna says easily more. Yeah, so Big Kahuna recorded the, the biggest one, but there was a lot of groups who said, like, hey, we're up at, like, 50, 60, 70 locations, and, like, we like we're, we brought healing, and we're all damage-free. We have all our assets out. Like, we're, we're fine. We can continue forever. And so I need to take it back to the drawing board. I need to add in some kind of, um, I think more acceleration of, of difficulty similar to depths yeah. of the off where mm. yeah. you know you just start drawing more and more treacheries so it's like every turn like everyone's drawing four treacheries or something to actually give it an end point but yeah. congrats we... to big kahuna for <laughs> recording the, the longest one so yeah and uh and we also have to give a shout out to reaper man's group um mm. because they were they graciously agreed that uh, rather than having it get into an an endless war of playing Arkham where they would still be playing to this day that they would uh, graciously uh, share the title, but allow big kahuna to be the one a to their one B. Nice. So yeah, well done everybody. Uh, we look forward to the fact that you gave Scott more work to do. Oh yeah. Thanks everyone. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So we talked challenge scenario uh, and then we have to get to one of the highlights of Arkham Knights for me. And mm-hmm. it's that Ian, I'm so proud of us. I just, I can't believe that after all these years, we finally got my Excelsior card back to me. <laughs> yep. I, we did I know it. that. I know that. We did it. I know because I live in the Midwest, that sounds like I'm being passive aggressive and saying we when I mean you, but I really mean we because how many times have we had it since then, which it's now like three years where. I see you and I have promised I would remind you and I've forgotten to remind you. And it just in a comedy of errors, I now, I now finally have my complete Excelsior pack again. Um, What card was it? It was the, what have you done? Oh no. (laughs) Yeah. Because it was when we played it that, that initial year Mm -hmm. uh, it ended up in Ian's deck and then he he flew home. Uh, So I was, I was, playing it with uh, my friend Chad probably last year or a year and a half ago and we tore through the scenario and at the end he goes so where's what have you done like I don't know I just I played this <laughs> when it came out and he's like I think you're missing a card and sure enough I was and then uh, through the magic of using different sleeves and piecing it together we found it mm. so anyway go us Ian well, boys, uh, any any final words on Arkham Knights 2022, which was kind of a, I mean, it was kind of a short notice thing that mm-hmm. we got involved in, and I thought it went really well. You yeah. know, it, it was a little short notice, but additional thought for me is I have to give a huge shout out to Alex over, oh, 100%. over at, uh, you know, at the Game Center, but via Ghost Galaxy right Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. because um he is mainly over at ghost galaxy but he was put in charge of uh putting on arkham knights for the game center since they're owned by the same parent company 
Uh, he was amazing. He was great to work with, very receptive. When this was put on his plate, he reached out to us and said, hey, I, I've not done this event before. I've not been before. What can you guys tell me? And so, Sean, you and I went there, what, two or three mm-hmm. times. We spent a lot of time uh, connecting him with We others. traded many, many, many emails. <laughs> yeah, and so huge, huge shout out um, to Alex for all the work he put into it. Um, yeah, for, he, he for, was there every day just breaking his back, making that, making that event roll. Yeah, um, so for anybody who was there, just so you appreciate the work he put in a little more, like, he he built it from scratch. It wasn't because this is, it was put on by the game center, not FFG. So it was, it probably approximated what we know. Our this was a reboot. To be. Yeah. So anyway, uh, well, well done to him and kudos to game center, uh, for, for putting it on. I thought it was great. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll echo that. All right, boys. Well, we're, we're running a little long on this one. So let's roll it into a little bit of tentacle time. Justin, let's talk about Hades. Oh, can we please? I've been waiting for two hours to talk about Hades. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to, to be clear, neither of you other two have played this yet, right? No, nope. I have only watched Maxine stream it. Okay. I have not yeah. played. Have, have either of you... Oh, sorry, Ian, go ahead. I haven't played it. No. Okay. Have either of you played Transistor? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, that's Scott, the this sword is just, one, right? That's the sword one. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is Transistor as a roguelite with Greek mythology anime. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's... Okay, so look, look. I'm going to sell you on this one one step further. Mm-hmm. This is the game that I play on the Switch in bed. Mm-hmm. Um, it is so good on the Switch in particular uh, because uh, you could just play a room and hit pause and like a handheld just pick it up next time that you you decide to play like it's it's so good so good it mm. it is it's so good the the thing i want to talk about with it is so you and i have been talking about hades off and on for for mm-hmm. years i played it i think back in 2020 is what it said um, yep i feel like you started it probably like two or three months ahead of me mm-hmm. and then you played diligently through that first time and I played like a turtle and then fell off like the first two times I really tried to engage with it. Never really didn't like it, but there were a couple times where just like something else came out. Yep. So you like full on beat it and I don't think I had gotten to Theseus yet. Yep. Yeah, because I, I looked back and I had played just... I Now both of my runs are about the same in terms of how many runs I've done. I've done right around 100. So I did 100 in 2020 and was basically done-ish with the game. And then um, you'd been talking about it again a couple months ago, so I picked it up because I'm like, wow, I love Hades. And then <laughs> we kept – we have two friends that we continue to push it at. One who will love it and um, just it'll be a, probably another, you know, down two, three years before he gets to it because of his backlog. But our other friend, Brian, we suggested it to him. And I was really worried it wouldn't stick. Um, it's, and it didn't the first it, time. It it didn't, and it doesn't. I showed seem... it to him on vacation the first time, and he was like, "Yeah, okay." And I was like, "No, you'll like this." Yeah, and I I agree. I think he he would like it as part of the recommendation, but it doesn't seem like a thing that for for you or for I it jumps out as oh all those things you just listed. Yes, that's a game I will love. For him, yeah. it's a good game, and I, he would appreciate the craft of it. And so it's, mm-hmm. hey, dive into it. And so he was still almost bouncing off. And now he, he is just... Uh, he surpassed a, me by he's, he's leagues. He's a fiend <laughs> for it. We got to a point where um, as you beat the game, you can add on modifiers. I'm trying to keep this part spoiler free, but you can add on modifiers mm-hmm. that make the game harder. And they add mm-hmm. heat levels. And so, like, it's, hey, the enemies hit 20% harder, and that's a certain amount of heat. Or these mini-bosses are even stronger, adds more. And there's certain um, things you can unlock, and they're just, they don't add anything to the game other than humor, (laughs) really. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's at, was it 8 heat, 16 heat, and then it turns out it's 32 heat, Um in my previous game, I had gotten to eight and was like, wow, that's a lot. I'm never doing that again. 
since then, I've played Bloodborne <laughs> and other things, and so I got to 16 heat, and I was like, that's great. And then I saw that it doubled, and I was like, I'm never doing that. And then I I did it, and then I think a day or two later, Brian was like, I'm going to do it. And so now he's gone from bouncing off Hades twice to using the, like, I would say getting to 75% of the modifiers you can add, and it's just, yeah, it's so fun to watch. So anyway, Hades is amazing. If you haven't played it, play it. Um, it's it's just great. It's uh, not just the gameplay, but I I enjoy um, that it is. Someone mentioned it's like a dating sim. There's some of that in there. The story's <laughs> yeah. great. Um, it just feels right. So that's, and if oh, go ahead. and if you like Greek mythology, like I I, I like Greek mythology. It's probably the mythology that I know best. Uh, there's lots of little fun things there, and the characters are all like very. They, they strike the perfect balance of like the lines being kind of corny and campy versus just kind of. I don't know what the other quality is, but it it all reads really well as long as you enjoy the the theme of it because you play Hades' son, and the whole point, the run that you're making, is to try to make it out of the various layers of the underworld in one run, and you pick up you know various power ups as you try to go through each time. Um, and yeah, I have to say as, as, as a practicing bisexual, it is, it is just a smorgasbord, uh, <laughs> just to tell you guys that one. You know, it's funny as you are not the first, uh, openly bisexual person to tell me that <laughs> it's just like, wow, this is, this is everything. <laughs> yeah. It is as, as someone, <laughs> There's no pointed, shortage as someone points out in chat. And I think I've said this before on here, it is a far thirstier game than I expected. And it. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I think it actually adds to it. It doesn't feel like a pandering thing. It actually adds to the uh, the shtick they've got going. Um, yes, absolutely. One, uh, moving away from the thirstiness of it, but one more Hades thing from me before I, I kick it over to, we'll go to Ian. Uh, if anyone is playing Hades and they're doing high heat runs, I am insanely curious what, what builds people are using. For me, mm-hmm. I like to use, there's a... a basically a gun weapon and there's an aspect of and they're named for um you know the the different it's so it's like aspect of zagreus which is the character uh and i don't even remember though the two for the gun there's one aspect of lucifer that's the one i use for my high heat runs but our buddy brian uses the bow and uh Mm -hmm, i just mm -hmm. i i can't make the build he he does work for me but if others have ones i would love it if they messaged us because i just i want to know I'm not to the level you guys are at yet, but my best weapon is the fists. Mm. Um, whichever one has the magnetic pull on the special. Oh, I love that one. That one's so good. I, I, I love that one to death. It's like your nacho in a video game. That's right. It's so good. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Yeah. Hades. Yeah. Get it. It's on Steam. Uh, uh, one of the things that sold Brian on it and that I use constantly is you can you can get it on Steam. You can get it on Switch. And they cross save. So, like, I can be down on my computer and be playing the same game that I played last night in bed on my Switch. It's fantastic. It's so good. All right. Ian, uh, what's grabbing you? Uh, mine will be pretty quick. Uh, one of the things that's been grabbing me is a new TV show, The Peripheral, uh, which is a new Amazon series. Um, and I th- uh, the creators of Westworld were involved in uh, bringing this to TV. Um and I don't want to spoil too much because it's one of those shows where it's fun to figure out what it's about if you go into it fresh and don't really know what it's about. Uh, it's sci-fi-ish, has to do, like, if if you're familiar with Westworld, you're, you're kind of, it, it's a very different show, but you're kind of in for some of the same things, I, I think. So if you really dug, let's say, season one of Westworld, I think you might be interested in the peripheral. Um, the cast is great. They all do a great job and, uh, has to do like the basic pitches has to do with, uh, um, a virtual reality and some, uh, it, and some multiple kind of, uh, storylines that go along with that. So I think it's worth checking out. It's uh, the show that I'm really digging so far. And that, uh, who's the lead in that one again? It's, um, what's her name again? Uh, Chloe Grace Moretz. Um, 
Oh, right. It's Hit Girl. Who I ha- I actually haven't, like, she's someone I know as an actress, but I actually haven't, like, when I thought about it, I haven't actually seen a lot of movies with her in it, but she's, a, she's amazing in this show. Like, she really embodies and sells that character. So, yeah. Okay. <sighs> Not that my to watch list needs anymore, <laughs> right? but, I'll, but i'll add it <laughs> it's really hard for a show to to earn a spot and turn my head <laughs> but it has done that <laughs> thus far cool scott bring us home baby uh okay i have three quick things uh one i'm playing pandemic legacy uh year zero or whatever it's called um it's the third one of the legacy series it's amazing. If you like the first two Pandemic Legacies, uh, it does. It's Cold War, and you're not fighting a disease per se. You're fighting the Reds or the Soviets, um, and it just does stuff that I never thought you could do with Pandemic. It's fantastic. Uh, speaking of Pandemic, I bought the Star Wars Clone Wars board game when I was at Arkham Knights. Um, yeah. Oh no, and we never got a chance to play it. No, I we didn't. Uh, but I've, I played it since, and you know what? It is fun. I kind of wish we had played it, uh, and Aww. everyone's. Yeah, I mean, like, whatever, I'll bring it out. Um, but it is... <laughs> no, if we're going to do anything like that, we need to do Rebellion, but carry on. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's super fun. I know there's been, like, people say, oh, it's like Pandemic, because it uses some Pandemic things, but it is so, like, playing it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can see the Pandemic influences, but it is not a Pandemic game. They've added a sure. whole bunch. It is a fantastic game. Uh, The third thing I want to talk about is the big thing. Um, My second favorite board game designer, uh, Vital Lacerda, who is known for making just monster games. Uh, His most recent one uh, released. It's called Weather Machine. Um, And uh, I'm just super excited to play it. And if there's other Lacerda fans out there, I want to talk to you about it. I don't know how to explain this one. It is. There's economy there's bidding there's uh worker placement like his games are just beyond complicated so for this one just to give you an idea the rule book is like 24 pages long with very small font the player aid like you know how like complicated games will give you you know a little cheat sheet (laughs) it's seven chart yeah it's seven pages long the cheat sheet is seven pages the box weighs 13 pounds. Like, the amount of cardboard and wood and stuff like this. I gotta find a picture of the, the four-player thing set up. Are you sure you didn't just get sent a real weather machine? Like, it's <laughs> it's insane. It's just... It's hit, like three-fourths of a tree. His stuff is just... Like, I mean, just zoom in on that and, and look that at... That is some very... Of the, pretty yeah. board presence it is his games are masterful they are crunchy as hell but they are all just amazingly elegant um mm. but they take like three to four plays to learn easily to to sure. figure out what you're doing um but once you get that like it is just i find his games are the most rewarding board games that i play because <laughs> once you once you finally get it and you have like two or three other players that like get it with you. It's amazing. This one can be played solo, which is why I am like super hyped for it. So hmm. that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, psychopath. Boy, us gamers who who grew up on Star Wars CCG are of a type, aren't we? Yeah, and and that's totally it too. Like um, psychopath, <laughs> he says, I kind of hate Lacerda's design. I'm not going to yuck anyone's yum, but it's not for me. I don't blame you. Like, that's the thing. Like, anyone who's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, like, Lacerda stuff is too complicated. I'm like, yeah, you're probably. I, it, it, it is for, <laughs> I, I don't blame you for not liking it. It's it's not for everyone, and it shouldn't be for everyone, and you should have no shame in that. It is just absolutely bonkers complicated. So, but yeah, like, you're exactly right, Sean. It's a Star, it's the, he is the Star Wars CCG designer of board games. Goddamn. Yeah. So. I will. Okay. I won't. I won't play one of these games with you because we'll need to play it multiple times. Like Rebellion, uh, we can play, and I'll teach we'll you. See, but any it. of that infringes on precious Star Wars CCG time. I mean, I would consider playing Latel Vital games with you in, in instead of Star Wars CCG. God damn, that <sighs> is. Oh, that's, 
I mean, it's close. The thing is, you already know it's how to play praise. Star Wars CCG, which is nice. <laughs> like, this would be... <laughs> yeah. And then also, like, the Tal games, if you have one player who knows what they're doing and one who doesn't and is learning, like, of course, the person who knows what they're going to yeah. do. Yeah. So, he, uh-huh. ha- he has some less complicated ones. This one is just this, and there's another one he has called On Mars, which is just another super complicated one. But he has other ones that are, are um, a lot more approachable. So fun but i love his really crunchy stuff so well cool Mm -hmm. let's check that out all right well we've run a little long on this recording so i'm just gonna go ahead and set expectations that the the next episode might be a little (laughs) bit on the short side uh uh so uh but you know that's just the way it goes thank you all for joining us for episode 141 of mythos busters and we'll catch you guys for 142 bye bye Thank you.